Well, hello everyone. Welcome to another Friday, which means another lawn care live stream. My name is Ron Henry and I am here to answer your lawn care questions. If you're new to the channel and new to the live stream, welcome. First of all, um, the way this works, really simple. Just simply drop your questions down in the chat and I work through them in the order they come in. Sometimes I have the answers, sometimes I don't. But either way, we have a great time talking about lawn care. All right, so let's see who we have um, here tonight. We got Austin. Austin's got a couple of questions that I'll roll through. So Austin's in the house. We got Daniel B. We got Higgy Pop. Uh, VMH, Mr. Crabgrass Elimination is in the house saying, hey, Ron, happy Friday. And uh, and yeah, hopefully everybody's doing well. Hopefully, hopefully everyone's lawn is, um, is, you know, transitioning nicely into dormancy. My lawn is starting to lose lose some of its color, which is to be expected. As you guys know, if you've been watching the content, I got the uh, video out this past, I think it was Monday, on um, pre-emergence. So I showed, showed you guys how to do um, prodiamine, just straight prodiamine by itself, which is applicable for cool season and warm season grass, and then also coastal, which is like a combination. That's prodiamine as a pre-emergent, but also as a combination of a couple other herbicides to um, and get a better a better result. So let's jump in. Uh, let's see what questions we got tonight. Hope maybe tonight will be a short night because tomorrow I got a busy day. I'm going to be um, uh, proctoring a black belt pretest. So it'd be nice to get a little bit of sleep, but we'll see. We'll see what kind of questions you guys have. All right, to kick things off, we got Austin. Um, Austin, I am going to butcher your last name. But I'm going to try. It's Ostriker. Ostriker? I think that's close. Austin Ostriker. So I got my soil test back. pH is 7 oh, is uh, right at 7. Sulfur 26. Calcium 11 oh, 06. Calcium, calcium seems pretty high. It sounds a bit high. It says, um, I want to get it better by spring. Add more sulfur and, and calcium with elemental sulfur. Um, it'd be nice to actually see the soil test. Um, Austin, if you don't mind, if you don't mind emailing me, it's, it's this, it's ron at golfcourselawn.com. Send me the actual soil test results. Just looking at the, um, the pH, like your pH is, is, I mean, it's on the higher side of the acceptable scale, but not so high that I would actually, um, look into applying like a, a sulfur or, um, or citric acid at this point. You can, if you want, but it's, it's, you know, it's just on the higher end. It's almost like if, if someone sends me, sends me a soil test result and their pH is in the low six, like, you know, high fives, low sixes. Um, yeah, you can add a little bit of lime to bring that up. And same thing for you. If you want to bring a, if you want to do a little bit of sulfur to bring things down, you can, but it's, um, given the fact that you're going to be fertilizing over the next season and that, that tends to have effect of, of dropping pH over time. I, I might just do that instead of trying to, um, instead of trying to do something to take, take care of it. Um, now that's, I guess is what I'm trying to get to, but if you don't mind, send me an email with your soul test results, the picture of them, and I will look at it and get you a better answer. Great, great question. Good one to kick it off with. All right, next up, we got Daniel B. in the house. He says, uh, hey, Ron, what is the shelf life of the Golf Course Lawn Carbon Kit, Turfplex, and Miramichi Green Pest Control? If I buy these products now, can I store unused portions at room temp until spring? Yes. Yeah, you can. The only thing I would tell you is that um, whenever you get ready to use them, kind of like anything that you've, you've left stored uh, for a while, any liquids, um, give them a good shake. Give them a good shake. Get everything mixed up really nicely um, and then use them. Yeah, as long as you're keeping it sealed, you know, you make sure the cap's on nice and tight. You should be good to go. No, uh, no, no worries at all there. Um, on the on the subject of um, carbon and and the carbon kit, uh, let you guys know Essential G is back in stock. Um, it came back in stock middle of this week, so just just a few days ago. Uh, so if you guys were interested in getting that and it was sold out, now it is back in stock. So for those of you guys, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, Essential G is the granular carbon product that Miramichi Green makes. This is like the the successor to Carbon Pro G, excellent product. It's like, it's a part compost, part biochar. It's also got some humate in it. Um, really, really excellent product. Also has a bit of silica. So again, this is like Carbon Pro G um, stepped up to another level. So it's got some more things in it other than just Carbon Pro G. Both are excellent products, but for a while this was sold out and now it's back in stock. So I just wanna let you guys know that. And I'm not sure if we'll get any questions about PGR, but another question, um, so there's something else I wanted to get you guys as far as like housekeeping goes is a few weeks ago, I showed you guys um, this uh, PGR that Syngenta made made available in a smaller size. So Primo Max, which is like the brand name for Trinexapac Ethyl, right? This is a, a Syngenta product. Um, this is now available. So um, I was showing you guys a couple of weeks ago saying, hey, yeah, it's really cool. It's now in a small four ounce container, it treats about 16,000 square feet, depending on your application rate thereabouts. Um, but this is now in stock. Um, so if you guys wanna get that, Do My Own has it, they're carrying it. Um, and I, if you guys are, are interested in that, I mean, again, if you have cool season grass at this point, for a warm season person, you're probably not gonna be doing PGR, 
this time of year, but any of you guys with cool season lawns that want to give it a shot and don't want to own a gallon of um, Trinexapac ethyl, I'll put a link there in the description uh, or in the, um, in the description in the chat for you guys to be able to do that. So this is now available. You can get it. It's not just Ron showing off something that is unobtainium. Everyone can get it now. So there you go. All right, next up, we got Higgy Pop in the house. It says, hey, Ron, Xfinity did some work in my front yard. Oh, boy. Oh, that's, I, I, I've been there. I mean, not Xfinity, but AT&T. And uh, yeah, hopefully you're not gonna about to tell me they, they did some damage. But you said, okay, they made several holes when putting in a new cable. Uh, they did put my Bermuda sod back. What should I do to get the lawn back to normal? Uh, just give it time. Uh, the, as long as they put the sod back in place, it's gonna grow back in. It's not gonna, I highly doubt that what they did would be enough to kill it or do any permanent damage. Um, what you might find, um, Higgy Pop, is um, you know it's probably not gonna be as even. Looks when you pick, lift the sod up and you put it back down, it not doesn't always go back to the same like level or, or evenness that you had before. So while you may not be able to address it now in the spring, I might, you don't be surprised if you have to do like a spot top dress in that area to help get it back to the way it looked before. But outside of that, I really wouldn't worry about it. You don't have to do anything special. Like I wouldn't throw a bunch of nitrogen at it or do anything special, anything like that. Um, you know, just, just give it time, um, you know, put a little bit of water on it and it'll, it'll, you know, it'll establish and do just fine. I wouldn't do, uh, wouldn't do too much to it. All right. And you have a follow-up question. It says, uh, the season is ending and I was about to drop some pre-emergent. Should I wait on the pre-emergent? I am in coming Georgia and I have Bermuda grass. I would not wait. I would get your pre-emergent down. Um, I mean, there's, there's like all the trucks around here, true green. Um, who are some of the other ones? All the, all the, you know, all the, all the, all the, the spraying companies in this area, um, turf mark a bunch of them. I mean, I'm giving them a bunch of free advertising, right? But I mean, uh, they're around in, in my subdivision. Uh, you see the trucks rolling already, putting out pre-emergent. So it's absolutely the time. Really, September is when that window opens as far as getting it down. And, you know, in my opinion, um, getting pre-emergent down a bit early is better than putting it down late, right? Because, you know, anything that, that if you wait too long, if you wait till, say, the middle of, um, well, now this month, we're in October. Today's October 1st. It's crazy. This year's flying by, man. Um, but if you wait till say the middle of um, October or even late October, you're just allowing more cool season weeds like POA to germinate, which is just gonna you know be more of a problem for you in a few months in the spring when they start really showing uh, their head. So I would get it done now. If it were me, I would get your pre-emergent down now. I would not wait. Um, I already did mine. Um, and uh, yeah, and as far as that goes, you, you got tons of different options. You can do um, prodiamine like I showed in the video. If you wanna try out Coastal, that's a great um, product to try out as well too. If you wanna try something uh, new, um, but yeah, there's tons of tons of awesome options for um, for pre-emergent. Um, but yes, I would do it. I would get it done now, this weekend. That, that's that's your mission for tomorrow if you have the time and already have some. All right, next up we got Mr. Robert Rainey in the house. He says, "Good evening, Ron. Another Friday night special. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. High Golf Pose should be a, a great time. Looking forward to hanging out with you guys." Um, let's see, we got Jack Riff. I think Jack, you're new. I don't think I've I've, I've seen your name before, but I appreciate it says, uh, hit the like and, and like button and support any way you can. That's a good point. I, I do appreciate that, Jack. The like likes are free and they do a lot to help uh, the channel. Next up, we got Mr. Clayton Wilson in the house. He's saying, happy Friday, Ron. What's going on, uh, Clayton? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well. And then uh, next we have, Jack has a question. So first he says, you know, get, everyone give the, the, chat, the, the live stream a like. And then he has a, he says with a question. His question is, what is the most resilient grass for pet Sp uh, spots uh, slash burns. Also, why can KBG and Bermuda be a grass mix, Bermuda, and not perennial rye grass and Bermuda? Um, okay, so there's two questions. We'll take it one at a time. Uh, as far as resilient grass for it, I mean, the best thing is just to not have your 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 pet pee all over the lawn. What I would have them do is um, kind of what Alex does. He has like a section of the lawn, like the corner is kind of out of sight. He has that as like the designated sacrificial area. Um, where he's trained his dog to go, um, you know, use the bathroom to go urinate. Um, and that, that tends to work well. That's one of your, really one of your better options, in my opinion. As far as like grass that's um, more resilient, um, I've not seen any that stand up to, um, to pet burns better than others, especially if you're, you're already fertilizing it. So what I have seen in some cases is in lawns where um, people don't really fertilize their lawns, they just kind of neglect them. They mow it, but they don't, they don't do any, um, any nutrition. They don't add any nutrient to it. Uh, those lawns, whenever a dog pees on it, it'll, the, the areas will turn bright green, but they tend to burn less often or less than a lawn that's being well fed. So like a lawn like my lawn or Alex's lawn, or probably like your lawn, if you're doing a lot of, um, you know, you're regularly fertilizing it, like those lawns are going to burn easier if you, um, if a, if a dog does their business on it, um, because there's already, there's already plenty of nitrogen in the lawn, right? 
So um, as far as a resilient grass type, the best thing I'd say is just train the dog to, to, to pee in one area. And then as next about, as far as KBG and Bermuda grass mix be a thing, but perennial ryegrass and Bermuda not be a thing, um, they, they kind of are two and the same. So um, there are like a good example, like when you look at like Augusta National, right? Augusta is really a Bermuda course. Like the, the base grass type is Bermuda, but when we see the course during the masters, it's overseeded with print with ryegrass. Um, it's a similar thing with, with, um, Kentucky bluegrass and Bermuda. You can do them together. Like you can grow them together, but you're still going to have two grass types that are, that are competing with each other. And, and what, what you're going to tend, what tends to happen with that is much like if you have, um, rye grass, if you overseed your grass with, um, your Bermuda lawn with rye is when spring rolls around, you're going to, you're going to slow down how quickly the Bermuda comes out of dormancy because it's already got another grass that's growing actively. That's, you know, consuming nutrient in the lawn. Um, so from a stamp, from a standpoint of, of differences, there's, I mean, they, they both can work. I'm not a fan of either because I, because like, I want my Bermuda lawn to really do well once March, April rolls around. And a big, and a big part of that is not having another grass type that's competing with it, which means I'm going to have to spray like a, a herbicide to get rid of the rye grass or Bermuda grass. Um, that's, uh, oh, sorry, or the Kentucky blue grass that, I, that the lawn has been overseeded with. And it's just a lot of other hassle. So. I wouldn't say that if you put those two together, like there's this magical combination that um, Bermuda and and uh, and KBG will magically work well together and everything is all great. Because another thing to keep in mind too, right? Even if you could, even if you could get Bermuda and Kentucky bluegrass to play nice together, you're just you're complicating things in a major way when it comes to like PGR applications. Because think about it, like like PG, the rate for PGR for um for Traxapac ethyl that type of pgr anyway so there's, there's tons of different types but for that one the rate for bermuda is about half of what it is for um kentucky bluegrass and perennial ryegrass so which rate would you use right if you decide you're going to start putting pgr on your lawn come springtime you've got two you got you have to kind of pick which one you're going to go with which means that it's going to be you're probably going to go with the lower rate which is fine from bermuda but not quite enough to regulate the kbg or rye so you're just going to have them growing at different rates um, if you ever have to spray selective herbicide on your lawn, that's going to be a nightmare because a lot of the, um, selective herbicides outside of like, say blindside, I think blindside is safe for Bermuda and KBG, I think, um, outside of like just a, a very few, a small selection of them, right? Typically a herbicide that you spray on a cool, on a warm season lawn like Bermuda is going to kill or damage warm se cool season grass and vice versa. Something is that's safe for cool season grass is going to damage Bermuda. So you're just complicating things by trying to have both of them actively growing in the lawn at the same time. So that's why I really wouldn't, I really wouldn't recommend it. Plus you also got to mow then all this, all, uh, you know, year round, even when it's cold out, you got to be out there and, uh, and mow the grass. So, um, hopefully that helps answer your question. Uh, that's a good one. All right. Next up, Piggy Pop says, Hey, this time of year, the sun is reflecting off my windows and is burning my lawn. What can I do to stop this? I don't know. It's a good question. I have the same problem in two areas of my lawn. Um, I don't know if like closing the, I don't think even closing like the blinds or, I mean, I guess you could put like a covering over the windows, but that's going to look weird. Right. Um, so where it's not as reflective, but that's going to, again, it's going to look, it's going to look kind of weird. I, I would probably just, uh, just deal with it. Uh, Higgy pop, if it really bothers you, um, maybe some kind of covering or some kind of tint or something might help. Um, but I've never tested that. I've just dealt with the fact that there's going to be certain areas of my lawn that at during certain times of year, uh, are just going to like, there's two spots that just are going to struggle because they're get they're literally getting like hit by a magnifying glass. Right. So um, that's me because any of the other, any of the other alternatives that will probably, that will help with that are going to make the outside of your house look weird. and will probably trigger a letter from the house association, assuming you have one where you live. All right, next up, we got a uh, wise guy in the house. He says, let's do this. Best YouTube show on Fridays. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Uh, wise guy. I appreciate the kind words and the super chat. Got to do that. Thanks for kicking super it off. Received. I appreciate the support. So I appreciate your time and commitment in helping others across the country with their lawn. And man, it's it's like gotten blurry. I can't read the rest of it. We'll just move on to the next next question here real quick. <laughs> he says, Zoysia is king though. All right, wise guy. Of course, you got me. He says, uh, thanks to you, Ron. My soil test results have never looked this good. That's true, man. I, I did look at your soil test results uh, today. You sent them to me yesterday. I got a chance to look at them this morning and they look great. Like you're asking me if I should do anything. And I'm like, well, not really. If you want to put down a small, like a taste of nitrogen, just to scratch that itch, you can. But like your lawn, your soil looks awesome. And I'm sure your grass looks awesome. So really, really good, man. I'm glad to hear that all is going well with your less than awesome zoysia grass. All right. Um, I've answered uh, Daniel's question there in the chat. And then we got um, Daryl says, hey, Ron, how's it going today? I'm doing well, sir. Cannot complain. 
uh, getting ready to take a break. Looking, looking, looking forward to like you know things slowing down a bit, having to mow less, take the greens master in, get it serviced, all all good to go for next season. So yeah, I'm uh, I am doing well. Cannot complain. All right, Brick Rehab says I sent you a picture through Facebook Messenger. Can you identify what is growing? Happy Friday. So I did check it just before the live streams. I don't really check Facebook Messenger that often, so it's not really the best way to get a hold of me. Um, I'm not sure. You have to give me a, bit, a little bit better um, close-up picture. Um, I bounced it off a buddy of mine really quick, and he said it looked it looked um, potentially like some fescue um, growing in the lawn, but um, it'd be nice to know if you can. Let me know what part of the country you're in, um, and that will help answer the question. If you can take a little bit closer picture, like lower down, that will be, at, be a little bit more helpful to Brick Rehab. So... Um, Thanks. Thanks for the question. And if you, um, you know, if you want to get a hold of me or send me a picture, send it here, Ron at golfcourselon.com. Like I check email way more than I check like Instagram or um, or Facebook Messenger. So that's a better way to get a hold of me if you want a faster response. I'll eventually get to it, but just not as fast as if you, you know, you use my email. Great, great question. All right. Next up, we got Travis Winston in the house. He's like, uh, Happy Friday, uh, Golf Course Lawn Squad. As always, Ron, your content is a one, sir. Thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate it. I do appreciate that. All right, next up, Austin is back with another question. He says, Texas Bermuda, sole test show everything is low. Um, gives us his numbers for MPK. He says, I have been spoon feeding all year. Uh, sticky gray clay soil. I want to get it better by spring. What should I do? So I wouldn't, so here's the thing, Austin. Now that we know what your soil tests are, if you don't mind, same, same answer I gave the other person uh, that asked me this uh, question with soil test results in it. If you don't mind, send me send the results to me here at ronatgolfcourseline.com and I'll get you a better answer, but the, the long, the, the short answer is um, there's not much that I would do right now because we're getting close to the end of the season. I wouldn't throw a ton of NPK at the, at the lawn um, to try and fix, to, to try and dramatically raise levels at this point. Cause you have, you did say you have Bermuda and it's going to be going dormant here soon. Now, I'm, I'm not sure where you are. If you're in South Texas, you might try like a, you might put down like a triple 12 or something if you wanted to, to try and bring levels up a bit. But if you are, um, you know, I don't know if you're North of Houston, like San Antonio area, um, I, I would probably wait until the spring. One thing you didn't mention was pH, which your pH is, which that's something I would be interested in seeing because that is something that we can do something about. Assuming it's low, we can do like a Lyme application. We can do that now, um, which this is the ideal time for that, right? So if you don't mind, send me a, a, an email with your soil test results. I will take a more a deeper look and I'll get you a better answer. Long short is I wouldn't go too crazy right now given that we are at the end of the season for, um, for warm season grass. Great, great question. All right, we got Mr. Papa Mo's Low in the house. Says, hey, everyone, what's going on, Papa Mo's Low? Thanks for coming to hang out. I appreciate you. I guess you, you got away from the grandkids uh, this Friday, which is always nice. Um, and then we got JG in the house. Says, happy Friday, y'all. Weather for ready for another beautiful weekend. It is. It's a really nice day out um, today. Well, it's getting to be dark now, but it was a really nice day earlier. Um, but yeah, yeah, it is uh, nice weather for a change. I think we're supposed to get some rain on Monday, I believe. So for any of my Georgia folk, or Northeast Georgia folk, if you're trying to get some pre-emergent down, get it down. This weekend's a great time to do it um, because, uh, you know, next, you know, if we're going to get rain on Monday, it's, it's free, free watering, right? Can't beat free water. All right. Uh, Brick Rehab says, actually getting some rain and football on. Uh, what a great weekend. Yes, sir. That's right. Most definitely. And then uh, Joseph Roberts is in the house. He says, hey, Ron. Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. Sup, uh, Joseph. Hope all is doing well. Hope you're doing well, man. Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream for a bit. And Papa Mo's lawn is in with a, I guess I get the testimonial. He says, True Green stopped by after treating a neighbor's lawn to ask how I got my grass to look like it does. I told him I to follow Ron Henry. Um, yeah, I, I mean, well, what would you, yes, yes. I mean, the, the products that I recommend as far as like the, the fertilizer, the Humic Max, the um, Turf Plex, and of course, the golf course lawn carbon kit. Like, you know, you have to have that, that accoutrement in your, added to your, to your lawn care program. Got to have that. Um, Yes, all those things definitely help, but I know you've also been keeping up with your mowing and you've been doing a lot of things to really, you know, take care of your lawn. So, so yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, the thing is, and, and to be fair, in all, in all fairness, right, like your lawn should look better than a lawn that's treated by True Green or, real, or most lawn care services because most of those places only do seven, eight applications a season, maybe, maybe that many. Um, and you're out there, you know, a couple times a month. Um, you know, one, you're mowing a lot more than everybody else, and you're also applying product that, you know, that based on soil testing um, are exactly what your 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 lawn needs, what your soil needs. So it's not really surprising that your your lawn looks better than other lawns in the neighborhood. So that's cool, man. That's pretty that's pretty cool that you have a service that does it for a living is uh, is recognizing, right? They're recognizing the domination 
that you're throwing down. It's pretty awesome. All right, uh, let's see here. Joseph Roberts is in the house. He says they got some, finally got some rain coming to Oklahoma. Got five eighths of an inch and some more coming. It's pretty nice, uh, Joseph. So maybe some of all the rain that we had in Georgia that would not stop like in the last couple of weeks, maybe some of that finally made it your way. All right, Dalvin asked a question. He says, hey, Ron, how many pounds of N are you doing this weekend? And are you doing turf plex also? Yeah, I'm going to be doing um, just uh, Humic Max this weekend. I'm probably, I'm not going to, I'm unlikely to do uh, turf plex because the lawns are already beginning to check out a little bit. And I don't want to, to push um, too much growth this, um, at this, this time this year. I mean, could I get away with doing turf plex? Yes. But remember last year, um, or I should say last year, earlier this spring, I had some issues with spring dead spot. So, you know, I'm really trying to, um, to limit or manage how much nitrogen I put into the lawn um, as it's going in the dormancy uh, this time around to try and also help with that uh, next year. So just a standard application of, um, of Humic Max, which is gonna put you at right, uh, just under half a pound of nitrogen per thousand. That's gonna be, that's a great closeout for the, for the season. And um, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna do Turfplex um, this weekend. So yeah, I'll be doing that. And then I'll also be doing uh, Headway G, my first application of fungicide uh, this weekend as well. So to get the, get the lawn all ready and good to go, uh, to go to sleep for the winter. So um, we'll see how it goes. Great, great question, uh, Dalvin, I appreciate it. All right, uh, next up, Kevin She has in the house is, hey, y'all, what are we going to do in the winter? I guess I'll have to work on the Harley. That's that's not bad, man. What am I going to do over the winter? Um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do over the winter. I mean, I'll probably, I'll still get out in the lawn and do some stuff. You know, I'll, I'll get out there every two, three weeks and just run, just make a pass over the lawn with the true cut, kind of knock down into the high areas, lay some stripes and just wait for spring. So that, that will probably happen. Um, I don't know. Probably do some more training. Um, next year's next year's our our world championships, so I need to start getting myself in gear. You know, with with COVID finally, you know, looks like it's slowly starting to finally fall off. We'll see. Hope I'm not jinxing us, right? I need to start training hard to get ready for uh, for worlds again in uh, summer of next year. So that's what I'll probably be doing over the winter. But working on your Harley is definitely a good option, Kevin. I uh, I agree with that. I agree and support uh, your effort. All right, Skinny Geek 10 is in the house saying, happy Friday, guys, what's going on? And then Thin Cut, um, Mr. Um, Mask and, and uh, Stickers is in the house uh, saying, uh, don't forget, uh, give me Ron Turkey Hill Lemonade for me tonight. Don't forget to touch that like button ever so gently. Turkey Hill Lemonade, is that like, a, like one of those really like bougie, is it, is it like a craft lemonade? Like, you know, like craft beer is a thing? Is it like a craft lemonade? So I've never heard of Turkey Hill. Um, you have to let me know how it, um, how it is. Um, and Brook Rehab says North Texas. It could be Fescue, man. It could be. It very well could be um, Fescue. I'll um, get me a better picture, and I will also pass it around to some buddies of mine in industry and get their um, get their their thoughts on it as well. We will get you an answer, Brick Rehab. All right. Uh, Kevin says um, best way to spoon feed with liquid fur during the summer. Okay, so I guess we're going to a summer question. Or we're just we're just preparing for 2022 early, Kevin. Um, the way I do it is. Um, my spoon feeding program is it's pretty simple. It's made up of, of two major products. One, the granular, which is uh, Humic Max by Lebanon Turf. And then for the liquid, I use um, Turfplex. So the Lebanon Turf Fertilizer, Humic Max, um, and shameless plug, I may as well show you guys what I'm talking about for those of you that are new to the live stream. So Humic Max, this one here, I apply this once per month at the beginning of the month. So like say starting in um, maybe April, most more than likely May, I'll start applying this once per month at the beginning of the month at a low rate of three pounds per thousand. That's gonna come out to just under just, just under half a pound of nitrogen, um, which makes up the bulk of the nitrogen the lawn is gonna get for the month. Uh, I'm going to follow that up on the same day that I do the Humic Max the first, the first of the month. I'm gonna spray Turf Plex, which is, this here, this is a, a, a relatively quick release um, liquid fert. And this I'm gonna be applying at six ounces per thousand. So I'll do that. Um, so it's a good example. Let's say that October we're not this, we're not like fall and we're actually summer. Like say so this, this was the summer, right? But tomorrow I would be going out and I'd be applying Humic Max and I'd be applying Turfplex. And then 15 days later, so the middle of October or the middle of the month, I don't want people to read this and be like, oh, you're spoon feeding in, in, the, in the fall. But the middle of the month, I would then do another application of Turfplex of the same liquid fert. Um, and that puts me in a, in a good spot to get right at um, between 0.7 and 0.8 pounds of nitrogen um, on the lawn over the course of the month. I find that that rate works well. Um, doesn't push too much growth, gets consistent color. Um, and that is, that's pretty much my spoon feeding program in a, in a nutshell. If you want to um, also add 
the Miramichi Green Carbon Kit. The, that's also that's also an excellent um, addition to that as well. That's what I teach in the Golf Course Lawn Academy. That's what a lot of people like, like Papa Mo's Low, Daryl. That's what all those guys are doing in their lawn. Their lawns all look awesome. Um, but yeah, the spoon feeding program is really a granular as the base and a liquid uh, fert as um, as like a as like a filler twice a month. So that's that's what I'll, I'll be doing next year. And now you know the answer. I don't know eight months early or so, Kevin. So uh, great question. Thanks thanks for that. I appreciate it. All right, um, Mac zero two is in the house. Is man, hey man, I finally made one of these things. Congrats, man. Congrats, Mac uh, forty two. You finally made it. Um, you know, we're going to keep doing them over the fall. Uh, so yeah, you know, hopefully this won't be your last, but glad that you are here. And Papa Moslo says, um, I'm having an oak tree in my front yard removed tomorrow. Should I just fill in the hole and plug in the spring or try to plug now? Um, I mean, it's not going to hurt to try and plug it now. I mean, what, what's the worst that's going to happen? I mean, if you, if you, um, once you fill in the hole, if you put a few plugs in now, you're either going to take or they're not going to take. You're not really you know, you're not really hurting anything to give it a shot and seeing if some of it will root in um, and begin growing in. Yeah, I, I, if it were me, I would give it a shot. But don't be surprised if it, if it the, you know, that, that area doesn't, obviously it's not going to fill in between now and the spring. But if you want to get the process started, I mean, I see no reason to uh, to not to not do that. I wouldn't wait all the way to the spring with, with a big bare spot um, in your lawn. What, yeah, one thing I, I might say is if you've not done pre-emergent yet, and you probably didn't in the area where the tree actually was, is I wouldn't do it in that one spot. So the area that you're going to plug, um, let's just get the plugs in there and let's see how they do. You can always do pre-emergent a little bit later on if, it, if you know, if, if things are not working out so well. But if you're going to give that, a, a, um, you know, a good college try, then um, if you're going to do that, then I would limit, I would not do any pre-emergent in the area where the tree was, which it shouldn't be any because they're removing the tree, right? So hopefully that helps uh, Papa Moslo. I would, uh, I would go for it. I would, I would, I mean, what, do you, what really do you have to lose at this point? All right, next up, Skinny Geek is in uh, the house. Skinny Geek 10 says, oh, wrong person. It says, um, uh, many thanks for to leveling us up, Ron. I had several construction workers and superintendents stop by to say I have the best lawn in the neighborhood. Still needs work, though. That's awesome, man. That's uh, that's one of the best, um, you know, I guess one of the best endorsements you can have, right? As far as other people noticing your lawn and seeing that it stands out. And here's the thing, Skinny Geek 10. A lawn is never done. It's just never ever done. Like you're, you're. There's always going to be something to fix. Always something to be made better. Um, you know, is always there's always something to improve. There's when one part of your lawn is looking really great, the other part's going to be struggling. So it's really, you know, it's really really hard to have the lawn looking awesome all over year round. Like you know, there's a reason why like Augusta like does the the, the Masters the time of year they do because that's like the the, the ideal time when rye is looking awesome. Um, you know, and, and, and also their ornamentals look, are looking really awesome as well. The azaleas are looking awesome. So, but if you looked at that, even if you look at like, say Augusta national, which is an amazing course, right? If you looked at it uh, two months prior to the masters and probably a couple of months afterwards, it doesn't look nearly as good as it does when it's on TV. Right. So just realize that it's everything kind of like everything in life is, you know, it goes through trends and when, it, when everything's looking awesome, take tons of pictures, tons of video and enjoy it. Enjoy the process. Right. All right, next up, we got Mr. LG in the house. He says, killer PPE transition in the latest video. Thanks so much, um, LG. I try to make it interesting. You know why? Because, uh, you know, I, I study my analytics quite a bit. And, and here's the thing. When you start talking about safety and, and content, believe it or not, we say, hey, guys, we're going to stop now. And I'm going to take you out of what you really want to know, which is how to spray like this herbicide or insecticide or whatever it is. And we're going to talk about safety. People are kind of like, uh, you know, they, they kind of check out. So if I can make it fun and make it interesting to where we kind of get into talking about it, get in cover it and get back to get back to the thing that you really came to the video for, then that's good. So I've been working on that, been thinking about different ways of doing it to try and get creative with it. So uh, I'm glad that you took notice, man, because believe me, but really believe it or not, I do put thought into those things and I'm glad that you are taking note. I do appreciate it, sir. Hope everything is going well in uh, the Midwest. I'm sure the weather there is way too cold for, for my liking, but I'm sure your lawn looks awesome. All right, Stan G's in the house says, hey everyone, what's going on, Stan? Hopefully all is going well. Um, and, and then um, Kevin Sheehan says, how do you set up YouTube stories? I think that's right. Yeah, so YouTube stories, the way it works is, um, uh, I, don't, I, think there's, I think there is a, um, is, I'm not sure if there's a subscriber, I think there's a subscriber count that you have to get to for, for, for stories. So the way it works is, um, you guys can actually see, okay, you can see the hot, the hot streams are up on my, on my screen, right? But uh, if you have the YouTube app and you go to the center with like the plus button, one of the things that you'll see down there is you'll have like upload a video, create a short, and then add to your story. That's how you uh, that's how you do it. So if you just want to go and do like a quick and dirty 
uh, like showing something on your lawn that's only gonna be like a 15 second clip and just string them together like what I do, that's how you do that. But it's only on mobile, yet you can only um, record them using your mobile phone, Kevin. So um, hopefully uh, that helps. And I think you can only see them on mobile too. I think that's correct. So you have to be on a phone to see them as well. All right, um, uh, Robert Rainey says, I did one of your favorite chores this, uh, chores this morning, shrubs, bushes. You know, my shrubs actually look awesome now. They look amazing. Um, you know, they're all trimmed and looking great. And I hate doing it so much that a buddy of mine that has a lawn care business, I said, hey man, you know, whenever the guys are, you know, in here doing something or whatever, could you mind coming by? I'll, I'll, you know, I'll pay for you, I'll pay for it. Just, just come by and do the shrubs. And they came by this morning and did it. So I will actually, that's one thing for my YouTube stories. Tomorrow, you guys will see um, with the shrub in the front that used to look like a, you know, a nightmare, how nice and clean it looks now because they got trimmed up, got cleaned up. I, I hate doing shrubs that much, that much. That's how much I really dislike doing shrubs because it's not so much doing the shrubs, like actually like cutting them and shaping them. It's the cleanup that is an absolute nightmare, right? Like I see some people put a tarp down, but it's just, just too much work. And so yeah, I just paid someone to do it for me because I, well, I don't, while I will not pay someone to mow my grass, um, shrubs all day long. So I hate, I hate doing it. All right, next up, Win Cherish in the house is look um, look at this man. Uh, the guys are chomping at the bits for that knowledge you spread. Good work, sir, happy Friday. One question tonight, um, have you stopped watering? Yeah, I haven't, I have not. Um, outside of when I when I put the pre-emergent down, when I watered that in, I don't have um, any um, irrigation running. I don't have like a like a, a regular cycle going on my lawn or anything like that at this point, um, Win Cherry. No, no regular watering. And plus, um, you know, we're gonna get rain Monday, so no need to um to to do that so so yeah all right um next up we got dd's um in the house it says hey all you lawn lovers my eight yards of sand is all spread congratulations congratulations that's um that's worthy of applause that's a lot of work just need to throw down some seed in the front uh the backyard's been seeded and watered for five days break a leg or board for your test tomorrow um, I'm not getting tested. It's it's more it's the students. It's the people that are either um, chodan bows that are that are trying to test a or getting ready to test for first degree black belt or someone that is or people that are already first degrees trying to test for second. And we have one person that is uh, second trying to test to, uh, to third. So this is like the this is like the test prior to the test. Like you have to pass tomorrow to be able to allow to go to the to the test that's um, next month uh, later on this month in October. So it's like the pre-test, which is actually worse. Like what like what I put them through for that is way worse than the actual um, actual test. So you survive that, you're going to survive the uh, the real thing. But yeah, I uh, I appreciate it, and uh, I will I will convey your your kind words to all the uh, the candidates uh, DDs. Thanks for uh, for giving us the update on your top dressing work. All right, uh, Robert Rainey says, I applied Dimension this week with a new Yard Mastery Backpack Sprayer and it worked great. That's awesome, um, Robert. I like it, man. It's a really good sprayer. Uh, it's a, you know, it's a, it's smaller. Um, it's, uh, you know, just the the flow rate on it is no joke, man. You got some pep in your step. Even when you're running it at um, at the lower rate, you still gotta, still gotta be moving um, whenever you are, you're, you're running that guy. But it's a, it's a great sprayer. The, again, the only, the only criticism, the only thing I would really say is the padding on it is not as nice as, um, the flow zone and it in uh, really outside of the straps um, it really can't be because where the battery is you can't really open the battery door if there's a big pad on the back right but if, if I had to give Alan them any feedback I'd say at least make it to where you can adjust the straps with the sprayer already on like right now you have to take the sprayer off to do it but I mean it's a, like a small thing you know once you have it set up you're good to go but I'm like I'm like literally like trying to find things wrong with it because it's really really a great sprayer uh, especially for the price but I'm glad that it worked well for you, Robert, and that you got your pre-emergent down. That is that is good to go. Uh, next up, we got Dave's Lawn Vlogs in the house. Says, what's going on, Ron? I am doing well. Glad to, thank you for asking. It says, uh, grass is coming in after a rough renovation. Now I have moles. I just set traps. Uh, yeah, man, uh, that that stinks. Moles are something I've just never had to deal with, which is I am I am thankful for. But hopefully your traps work. Um, worst case, you can use like, um, what's it called? Like Talperid. I think there's like a mole bait. Um, that that works really well. I've had some viewers try that, and they've they've got really good results with it. So hopefully you get them under control, man. Sorry you are dealing with that. Uh, we have Demir in the house, uh, the greenskeeper. He's saying, "Hey, what's going on, Ron? Sweet, you've got the four ounces of bottles of Primo now. Uh, great product. Just applied to my lawn on Wednesday with iron and urea. Looking forward to some good turf talk. Awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not me. Syngenta. Syngenta is the one that's that's got it. I mean, it's it's awesome that they because you have to think about it. You you would think right for a really 
like how big a deal is it really? They've always made it available in bigger quantities. How big, much of a big deal is it to make it available in like a smaller quantity, right? But you gotta remember, like Syngenta is a multi-billion dollar company. You, you imagine like how much like meetings they had over the shape of the bottle, the labeling, the attorneys had to get involved to make sure the packaging was right and that you know everything they needed to say was in there. I mean, it's no small undertaking, even though it, it seems like it would be easy it's really no small undertaking to make something like that happen because you think about it, it's an investment they're making and really the only target audience is DIY. Like a golf course is not going to buy that, right? It's only people that are going to buy that for sm want smaller quantities of it to um, use on their home lawns. So it's, it's good on them, man. So it's good that, you know, um, you know, big, you know, really, really big names in the industry are embracing DIY, uh, which is, which is pretty awesome. Pretty, pretty awesome. All right, uh, next up we got Robert Rainey. He says, I ordered the Premium Promo Max with a smaller bottle as well. Thanks for the recommendation. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great option for people that have smaller lawns that just don't want to have to, you know, store a gallon of, um, of PGR for years and years and years and years and years. So, uh, so there you go. All right, Ogsen is in the house, says, glad to be here once again. Thanks again, Ron. Mushrooms, why? Um, lots and lots of, of, of microbial activity could be, I mean, also... Could be some fungus in your lawn, Augsen. I asked for a picture of of this tra this um, mushroom tragedy. I don't remember getting one from you, so I'm gonna ask again. Uh, send it. Send me a picture here of, of what you're dealing with. I personally would not do anything um, about them. I would not go out and spray or put down apply fungicide just to target um, mushrooms. I mean, if your entire lawn is covered with them, maybe then. But um, I've um, th this year too. I've not had. Um, as much of an issue as 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 I have had in years past, um, primarily because I had to apply um, uh, some heritage to the front lawn. Like I had that little that pythium outbreak, and I was trying to suppress it from spreading any further. So my lawn has seen more fungicide this season than it normally does, which has probably helped with um, mushrooms not being as apparent in my lawn. But I still have them. But the, and they only again they only last for a few hours. Like I'll go there in the morning, they'll be there, and by mid morning they're they, they've wilted and fallen over. So I tend to not do anything. Um, you know, specifically to target them. But send me a pic, let me see what you're dealing with, and we can formulate a plan of action since it seems like, I think this is like week two, so it's really driving you crazy. So let's see if we can figure something out. All right, uh, next up we got uh, Danny uh, DeBressen. What's going on, Danny? I think you're new to the to the live stream. I think, at least I don't remember seeing your name before. If you are, welcome. It's always nice to see uh, new, uh, new viewers, new commenters anyway. Um, Awesome, awesome stuff. And then we got Finn Cut in the house says, I put Pradimine down Saturday. This is my first year and, I, and I've and i really worked on my yard. Thanks as always for the info given out. My lawn hasn't looked so good. That's uh, that's good, man. I'm glad, well, I'm glad that your lawn is starting to transition to looking better um, and that all the hard work that you've been putting in consistently is uh, is starting to pay off, which is um, which is uh, pretty, pretty, um, pretty awesome. All right, Meryl is in the house. It says, um, happy Friday, Ron and everyone. Uh, any good tips for watering warm season grasses uh, during the winter? Um, thanks. So tips for watering warm season grasses during the winter. So first of all, thank you for the super chat, um, Meryl. I do appreciate super that. And as far as watering, I tend to not do very much, man, or if, if any at all during winter months. Um, I'm trying to think of even last, if last year I watered at all over the winter, and I don't think so because we tend, at least in Georgia, right? We tend to get, um, it tends to be more rainy during winter months. Um, and the grass just isn't growing, so there's not a whole lot of reason um, to uh, to put to put a lot of water on it. Um, the mo any moisture that gets in the lawn tends to stick around because again, it's not hot, it's not evaporating. So I, I tend to not not water my lawn during winter months, um, at least for warm season grass. Um, what what cool season guys do is maybe something different, but I uh, I don't I don't typically water my lawn not regularly anyway um, over the um, over the winter. Well, I I will say one one situation where you might here's a good test. If whenever you're walking on your on the on your warm season lawn, like your Bermuda, like if it gets crunchy, it's like you 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 walk on it and literally um like if you you look at the lawn like an hour later and the grass just isn't recovering or even the next day it's it's not recovering, like it's looking like it's crunchy almost, is probably the, without having a better term for it. That's a situation where you might put like might, might run one irrigation cycle. But as far as um like regularly watering the lawn like you do now and doing the summer and spring, I just I don't. You know, if the lawn looks really super dry, um, you might run one cycle just to kind of to you know put some water on it. But typically, you get enough rain during um, the winter, at least in Georgia anyway, that you don't need to regularly water the lawn. So, hopefully, that helps. I appreciate the super chat. Uh, great question. That is a uh, a good one. All right, next up we got um, David Polanco in the house. Says, hey, "What's up, Ron? Happy Friday! Uh, happy Friday to you, sir. Thanks so much, David. I really do um, appreciate it." Um, 
Let's see. Uh, let's see what other questions um, we we got here. Um, so we got um, Keon Castleberry, probably related to the other Castleberry, more than likely, but we'll answer the question anyway. He says, thank you for of all the info you put out. Um, it's helped. Um, what are your thoughts on fertigation? Never never done it. So you, when you talk about fertigation, the idea of putting like, um, like, uh, like adding like water in your lawn and putting fertilizer in along with it. Like I saw the lawn tools did a really cool video on that where they um, they got like, um, it's like a whole setup. Like it's like the fertilizer that comes with the system is specific to it. Um, and the nozzle that's used to spray it is also um, goes along with that. And I, I didn't really follow up to see what kind of results um, they got on their lawn. Looking at their Instagram post, their lawn looks awesome, but their lawn always looks awesome, right? So I, I, I haven't used it to be able to offer um, a, an opinion um, on that. The, the, I guess the one negative I might say about it, right, is that it limits to an extent um, which fertilizer products you can use. Like a, you have a broader selection if you're going with fertilizers that are designed to be applied um, by, from concentrate like in a backpack spray, like mixed with water. So I think you have more options with that. Uh, I'm sure there's people that do fertigation, they get a good result with it. I've just never done it to be able to comment. And I'll have to, I'll have to ask Jordan or um, you know the, the, lawn, the lawn tools as far as like how it worked out for them. I just, I haven't done it to where I can really comment on that. Thank you for the question, appreciate it. All right, um, next up we got, um, Erna Joe says, is it cheaper to DIY your grass or lawn care company? Oh, um, depends, it depends. Um, is it cheaper to do it yourself or lawn care company? Let me see, so like most lawn care, like I, I know when um, uh, a neighbor is told me they're paying $45 a month, and they pay that year round. So what does that come out to? Let's see, 45 uh, times 12, so that's $540. Eh, it's comparable, it's comparable. I mean, if you, um, you probably, depending depending on the size of your lawn and depending on what products you use, um, it, it's likely a wash. So, if, if, so in other words, if you're doing exactly what they are doing, so let's qualify this. If you're doing what they're doing, whether you're just putting down pre-emergent and um, twice, a year doing, twice a year you're doing pre-emergent and you're putting down fertilizer during the growing season, you can do it cheaper than um, than like what a lawn care company will do it for. If you're doing, if you're just strictly doing that. But now if we get into the point where we're starting to um, start doing spoon feeding um, and you're using like nicer fertilizers, like um, using like some of the more higher end stuff, you'll probably get close to that $540 um, amount. And if you start doing things like granular carbon, that's also another add-on. So what, so if you are comparing apples to apples to apples to where you're doing the same applications, same products, you can do it cheaper yourself. Um, depending on how much you how much value you put on your time. But if you start really getting into lawn care, I would argue that most people that get hardcore into it probably end up spending more because they use they start using a lot more products too. And you also have to figure too, right? You have to buy a um, broadcast spreader. You If you're doing liquid products, you're gonna need a, a sprayer of some sort. So if it's your first year, between those two things, you're almost at 500 bucks, right? So um, if you can do it long-term, I think you can you can come out better doing it yourself. But um, you know, it's it it re it really depends on you. I I will say you can get a better result doing it your, yourself. So if you're trying to say well, like which one can you get a better looking lawn with, doing it yourself hands down, no doubt, right? Um, but from a cost standpoint, um, depending on what you're doing, it it could be a wash. It could be a wash. Good question, Erin. That's a good one. I've not had that one before. That is a uh, a uh, a good question. All right. Next up, we got uh, Stephen James is in the house saying, I just ordered some green shocker to turn my yard green. It is a fast acting fertilizer, 712, I think. Cool, uh, Steven, let me know how it works. I've n I'm not familiar with that one, um, but if it, uh, I guess give it a go and, and see how it works. If it's a fast release fertilizer, I mean, there's not a ton of nitrogen in that, but still just make sure you apply it at the rate they recommend. So read the label, apply it at the rate they recommend, um, you know, so, and you should get a good result. Should get a good result. I've not, um, I've not used that one. I've not used that one, so I can't really um, comment on it. All right, next up, Mac is in the house with a question about pre-emergent. It says, hey, Ron, my Bermuda lawn, I seen Lesco Dimension um, 1907 crabgrass preventer. What's the difference between that and Sunnyland 007? So yeah, so the so couple things. Um, the Dimension product that you're seeing from Lesco has a lot more nitrogen in it. So it's like 19% nitrogen versus like no nitrogen in the Sunnyland product. Um, and the amount of potassium is the same in them, but also the, um, the, Dimension is a different, is a different um, uh, pre-emergent than what's in it's what's in the Sunnyland. I'm assuming you're talking about the one that is from Yard Mastery. So I know like Sunnyland makes Yard Mastery, um, your Yard Mastery's pre-emergent. Um, they they might have one as well that also has Dimension in it. But if you are talking about 
the Yard Mastery product, again, we're talking about um, this one, bring it up here, this guy here, which is a 007. Um, made by Sunnyland for Yard Mastery. Um, the, the active ingredient for the pre-emergent is prodiamine versus the Lesco product is Dimension. Um, out of the two, if I had a choice of, of, of applying one of those to my lawn this time of year, I would lean more towards the Yard Mastery. If for nothing else, that it doesn't have as much nitrogen in it, right? Like 19% nitrogen, that's a, that's a pretty good hit to, to, to throw on the lawn um, at this point in the season. That's something I would use more in the springtime. Like the, the Dimension 1907, that is something I would use. I would I would use the, the Prodiamine, the Sunnyland 007 now, and I would save the Dimension for the spring if that's what you decide you want to go with. You want to go with the Lesco one. Because in the spring is when your lawn's going to be able to take advantage of all that nitrogen. And frankly, Dimension is, um, like of the two for spring, I like Dimension um, more than um, Prodiamine. Again, either of them can work. But the nice thing about, Dim about Dimension is that if you, um, when you apply that, and if you already have some crabgrass that's starting to come in, it has a little bit of reach back uh, to kill um, um, young crabgrass that Prodiamine doesn't. So if I had to choice between the two in the fall, definitely the um, the 007, like the, the Yard Mastery um, product. Um, and then the Dimension, I would just wait till, wait till the spring, if it were me. That is what I would do, sir. So hopefully that helps. Great, great question. Great question. All right, um, next up, we got Lance F in the house. He says, hey, Ron, I just received um, Sunnyland Prodiamine um, uh, 65 WG. Uh, at what rate should I put it down at 1,000 square feet of lawn? Thanks, man. The directions don't make sense. I think you're talking about, I'm, I didn't realize that, that Sunnyland made a water dispersible granule. They might um, they make a lot of things. But if it's, if, it's, if it's water dispersible granule you're talking about, then uh, you are in luck because I literally did a video this week, or released a video this week, that covers that very topic, Lance. So if you um, take a look here, let me see, at Lance, uh, you already have it, so it's good. At Lance F, um, there's a video that's gonna show you um, how to mix it, how to apply it. Uh, the long short is for, I has it fresh in my head because I was just doing the video, but for Bermuda, you didn't see what kind of grass you have, but for Bermuda, the rate is between 0.36 per, thousand square feet up to 0.83, like 0.83 is the high rate, that's your annual limit, um, per thousand square feet mixed with one gallon of water. If you have a cool season lawn like fescue or um, rye, then the rate is 0.815, um, just call it 0.19, we'll just round it up, right? 0.19 ounces per thousand um, to 0.55 ounces per thousand. And that's not, that's per by weight, right? So you're gonna take like, um, I don't have, actually I do have one. So you're gonna take oh, something like this, like a measuring container, you're gonna put it on a precision scale, like zero it out, and then you're gonna you're gonna add the amount of um, product that you need um, for the amount of the for amount of lawn you're trying to treat. So if you only have a thousand square foot lawn, if you have Bermuda, you can do anywhere between 0.36 to 0.83. Um, you know, again, by weight, uh, mixed with one gallon of water. And if you have cool season grass, 0.195 to 0.55, I think is correct for cool season grass. And you mix that with one gallon of water and um, spray that over a thousand square feet. So hopefully that helps, but take a look at that video um, and that that I just linked in the chat and that should um, help clear things up if it doesn't, um, if, you, if it didn't make, my explanation didn't make sense. Make sure you wear, make sure you wear the right PPE if you decide you're gonna do that though. Uh, great, great question, um, Lance. Good that you're putting some pre-emergent uh, down. All right, Papa Mo's Lowe says, that's a, that's a good one, Papa Mo's Lowe. He says, at Hickey Pop, I had the same issue. I quit cleaning that window so the reflection isn't so intense. That's an option. That's an option. You're right. A dirty window doesn't reflect uh, glasses. It doesn't reflect this light as well as, um, as a, I guess, as a clean one, right? And then, uh, yeah, Brick Rehab is throwing, chiming in saying, um, try solar screen, screens. I don't know if it'll work, but it's worth it. And it, try, and it lowers your, uh, your cooling costs. Another benefit. All right. We have uh, Tariq over in the UK. He says, it's raining heavily in Preston, UK, and I just top dressed my lawn. Um, let's see what he says. Will my seeds germinate in rainy weather? Uh, yeah, yeah, Tariq. I mean, to be honest, like the hardest part about getting seeds to, um, like seeding a lawn is, um, is not enough water, not enough consistent water on the lawn. So, you know, the fact that you're getting free water from rain is a good thing because, you know, there's gonna be plenty of water to keep the, the, the ground moist, keep the seeds moist. Um, and it, it will help with germination. So as, as, assuming you're not having like a monsoon, right, where like, you know, large parts of your lawn are washing out. Doesn't sound like that's the case. Um, it's only going to help things. You know, if, if ideally, because in the UK, it's just probably, I don't know, rye or bluegrass or something. Um, if it could rain every day, like lightly for the next two weeks, that'd be perfect because then you don't have to water, right? 
Um, so yeah, no, to answer your question, no, um, there's no issue with that at all. No problems at all. She, you should still get good germination, assuming you did a good job, you know, putting, applying the seed and raking it in and all that kind of stuff. So I uh, appreciate you chiming in from, from across the pond, man. Uh, it's pretty awesome. All right, next up we got Robert Rainey. He says, I'm looking to up upgrade the mower for next season. Hmm. Big decisions here. He says, the green master has my eye. Okay. He says, where to look, um, where to look and are winter months better for finding a deal? Huh, um, where to look? I mean, the normal places, man. You can go like, um, you can do like Facebook Marketplace, a Craigslist if that's still a thing. I haven't been on Craigslist in forever, but if it's still a thing, check there. Um, Alex got his mower, I think, from OfferUp. That's another like, uh, I guess, like a Marketplace type store. Um, if you're looking to spend a little bit more, you can go to um, call up Jerry Pate. Um, Jerry Pate Equipment, Jerry Pate Company, they are in um, Southeast Atlanta. They get used mowers in all the time. And, you know, because they're a Toro dealer, they'll freshen them up, make sure they're all good to go. Um, and, you know, you're gonna, you know you'll be getting a quality unit or at least one that's been gone through if you buy it from them. You might pay a little bit more, but it's gonna be, you know, it'll be a unit that's good to go. Like last, last this past summer, they had like six or so mowers that were like $1,000 and they were like doing like a $500 freshen up package. So for that, they would um, sharpen it, put a new, I think they were putting a new bed knife on it if it needed that, do like a, a full service, like oil change, all that kind of stuff. Um, so not a bad deal for like, so 1500 bucks and you're out with a, with a fresh mower. Um, as far as the time of year to find it, probably now's actually not a bad time. Um, you figure it's better to find a mower when not everybody's looking for them and not many people try to buy lawnmowers in our, during winter months. The only negative you might find is that, you know, people might not be listing them for sale as much, but you probably will get a better deal um, right like around now than you would say in the spring because in the spring, they're going to have a lot more activity with people trying to, to look for mowers. So hopefully that helps, Robert. And I, uh, I wholeheartedly agree with your decision to look into the Greensmaster. They are awesome mowers. You will not, um, you will not be disappointed uh, with it. You will not uh, disappoint, be disappointed with it. All right. Um, let's see. Um, let's see what we got here. Awesome B has a question. It says, Hey Ron, have you ever used a product like Grounded by Helena with your pre-emergent? Any validity to their product? Their YouTube de demonstration with the librarian looking scientist is pretty convincing. Um, I've not used the product. Um, I've never even heard of it until right now. So I just learned about something called Grounded by Helena. So I'll look into it. Um, I'll just put it in my things to learn more about. Um, I don't, I don't know anything about it, so I can't really, uh, comment like, what is it? So, so it's a spray adjuvant. Um, I don't know. I mean, unless, unless it really helps it, you know, get absorbed in the soil. Um, I don't, I'm not sure, you know, what benefit it would be. The big, the big thing with pre-emergent is that you're not going to want to spray any kind of like, um, like ionic surfactant or anything that's going to help it. This is, that's going to prevent it from getting down into the soil. So if that product helps with that. I guess there could be some validity to it, but I don't, I don't know anything about it. So I really can't say how good or not good it would be, but I learned something new. I'll look into it. Thanks for uh, bringing that up. Awesome. I'll, think I'll, I'll look into it. Maybe we'll have an opinion or I'll, I'll, I'll at least look into it over the week. I may not have an opinion because I'm not, I'm not going to test it because I've already done my pre-emergent this year. All right. Next up, we got Lamont Stith in the house saying, Hey Ron, what's going on Lamont? I hope you're doing well. And then we got Leo saying, um, should I overseed now and aerate or vice versa? Depends. Do you if you have a cool season lawn and you want to aerate and overseed, um, you I would get it done sooner than later. Like you know the, the time to really aerate and overseed cool season grass. Like if you're looking for like the beginning of the time the window when you could have done that was in September, right? Early September is when you were getting into that that time frame. So yeah, you can um you can absolutely do that if you want. If you're going to overseed, I would aerate first. So I would aerate and then overseed. I would not put seed down and then aerate. Um, cause you don't want to put C down and then run the aerator all over it and, you know, tear the lawn up. I, I would, I would do it the other way around. Not because you really need to aerate the lawn to get, to improve like your germination, because it, as long as there's decent so soil to seed contact, seed's going to germinate without aerate, without the lawn being aerated. But in that, given the, the, the options you gave me, Leo, aerate first and then, and then seed. That is what I would do. That would be the order that I would do those things in. All right, next up, we got, um, BMH in the house. He says, Ron. I got 80% covered with Bermuda now. I had to do a second round of Celsius though. Well, that, that's what it takes, man. I mean, from what you were telling me, um, VMH, your lawn was looking kind of rough. Like it was more crabgrass than Bermuda. And now you're 80% Bermuda. So, 
you know, what you're doing is working. I know you did, I think you also did quinclorac as well. So yeah, it sounds like your process of getting rid of the non-desirable plant and to let the desirable plant, the weed, the, the Bermuda, I call Bermuda weed, you guys see that? <laughs> uh, letting your desirable um, plant, in this case, your Bermuda grow in, is working. So just keep just keep at it. Realize it's not gonna get all 100% this season, right? Like we are getting towards the tail end of the season and you've already made like a huge change in your lawn and all that's gonna happen now is, um, you know, in the spring, you're gonna pick up where you left off and things are gonna get even better. Uh, the only thing I would say, if you've not done pre-emergent yet, get that done. So you're not fighting weeds next spring in addition, you know, in addition to the stuff that you're having to deal with now. Um, and uh, you should be good to go, man. I think th by this time next year, your lawn's gonna be looking, gonna be looking awesome if you keep up with what you're doing. So awesome, awesome stuff, man. I'm glad to hear that all your consistent hard work is paying off. It's pretty awesome. All right. Next up, Mr. Troy Ridley is in the house. He has a question about watering, it looks like. He says, hi, Ron. I went from watering three days a week to two days a week for a month now, okay? Middle of the backyard has a growing issue. I sprayed uh, I spread uh, duocide down this summer. I didn't see any armyworms, fungus, or thirsty uh, Bermuda. Um, I'm not sure what the question is about fungus or thirsty. Um, I would, I might back that off, Troy. I'm not sure where you are in the country, but like, um, and again, I don't, it also depends how much water you're putting down. Like if you're running the irrigation for, you know, three minutes, three days a week, then it's, it's not that big of a deal. But um, like we're, the temps are starting to fall off and I would, um, the, the amount of water the lawn is gonna need is also going down. It's also gonna be reduced, right? So I really would, um, three days a week sounds like a bit much to me during the uh, the fall for warm season grass. I might back that down. Um, you're two days, but I mean, you know, again, I, if I might even go down to one day a week, to be completely honest. Like the lawn, I, I highly doubt the lawn needs a, a lot, that much water, unless you live like in Arizona somewhere where it's still, you know, 100 degrees outside or whatever the temp in Arizona is right now. Um, if you're in this in the southeast, you know, Georgia, Alabama, South Carolina, um, I would back it down because you, to your point, like too much water, like I would rather run a Bermuda grass lawn closer to dry, more on the dry end of the spectrum than on the overly saturated end of the spectrum. Because it just the, the, when it's too wet, it only creates all kinds of problems. Like I tested it this year, um, and you can get you can create fungus problems really quickly um, with too much watering. So I would um, I would back it down even more. Maybe go to one day a week if it were me. All right, um, and I'm glad you don't have any army worms. That's that's pretty awesome. And I guess you maybe got a you got like an insecticide down. That's that's preventing that. So uh, it's good. Hopefully it uh, it stays up. All right, Alex B is in the house. It says happy Friday, Ron. Renovation is going well. About two and a half weeks from seeding, and so many KBG seedlings are popping up front and back. That's awesome, man. Sounds like you did something right. Sounds like you did, uh, like your process worked. Because at what point next season would be okay to use PGR on the new grass? I would say let's let's wait till. Um, Let's wait till late spring next year. I mean, PGR isn't like pre-emergent where you really want to give it a full season for uh, cool season grass. But PG, yeah, so like if, if if in the spring you want to, you know, keep the ground, you want to put apply some PGR like Marchish or so um, while you're trying to keep the lawn looking nice, you can absolutely do that. You can you could do it next next season without without issue. It's it's really pre-emergent is the thing that I um, that people really want to stay away from. Um, until you've, you've given the lawn a good chance to establish. With PGR, not, not, really, um, not really so much. Really not as, um, as damaging or as um, harmful to grass as something like pre-emergent. But I'm glad to hear that all your, uh, your, your hard work's paying off, man. Nice work. Very, very nice work. All right, we got Mike Harvey up next. He says, hey, Ron, I love these uh, live chat Fridays. I'm in upstate South Carolina. Do I need to raise the height of cut to get ready for winter or just leave it where it is? I'm currently at around five eighths. I have gone up on uh, Mike. So I um, adjusted the height on the GM um, this week. I'm at like 0.75 now. So, and that's where I'm gonna maintain it. That's where I'm, I'm just gonna leave it um, into next, probably into next spring. Probably next year, I might get it, I might take it down to five eighths. I'm not gonna do half inch again next year. It's just, it's, it's too much work. Um, it's too much mowing, man. Like half an inch sounds really, sounds awesome. And it does look really cool, but it takes a tremendous amount of mowing to pull it off. Um, and as summer rolls around, it gets to the point where you almost have to mow every day, right? And I just, I just don't have the, um, the time. So, um, if you, if the lawn is still looking good at five eighths and you want to leave it there, you can, but going up to three quarters of an inch is, is, um, a good option. I mean, that's what I did last season. I didn't have any problems with running Bermuda uh, that low over the winter. You're in South Carolina, so your climate is pretty close to mine. So we're not going to probably get any crazy hard freezes or anything like that. Um, we're having like a thicker, 
you know, a thicker um, a stand of grass might might be helpful. So yeah, I mean, if you're at five eighths and it's looking good, and you want to leave it there, fine. If you want to take it up a little bit to three quarters of an inch, that's fine too. Um, for me, it's that the lawn is starting to scalp, um, which is why I just raised the height of cut more, more right? So um, so yeah, either, either way, Mike, either way will, will, will work. Um, but I think if you can get close to that three quarter of an inch number, that is what I would go with. That's what I've done in the past. And I've gotten good results um, come springtime without having any issues in the lawn. Great question. All right, so Robert, that's right. Robert did install some irrigation over the summer. He says, update on the irrigation install back in July. Looks like we will have complete recovery before winter like it never happened. Awesome, that's awesome, uh, Robert. So you see, you, so you, you went through the pain of like digging up the lawn, trenching it, putting your irrigation in, but it's recovered. And now next year, you have the nice benefit of being able to sit back and sip a lemonade and just uh, watch the irrigation keep the lawn hydrated. You have to get up there with a hose and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's well worth it. Very, very, very well worth it. Uh, very cool, man. Okay, so Thin Cut's filling me in on his on lemonade. He says, Turkey Hill is a brand we sell at Publix up in North Carolina. They also make ice cream. It's pretty good. I haven't tried Chick-fil-A lemonade. No, hey, hey, man, okay, Thin Cut, we're gonna have to deduct a stripe, man. There's gonna have to be a point deduction for this. I mean, so for me, for me anyway, and I'm sure those people are gonna argue with this, but for me, Chick-fil-A lemonade is the gold standard. They're not paying me to say this, I'm not endorsed by Chick-fil-A, but it's just, um, I am on a first name basis with the people at my local Chick-fil-A. Like they, you know, depending on, doesn't matter what car I drive, they'll, um, you know, they always ask you, what's your name for the order? Or give me a name for the order and they ask you what you want. It doesn't matter which car I drive when I show up, they're still like, hey, hey Ron, what's going on? What's it gonna be today? And I'm like, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I haven't gotten to the point where I'm saying the usual, but it's weird that they, regardless of what car you're in, they recognize you, but yeah, try um, Chick-fil-A lemonade, man. It'll change your life. Get it with no ice. Yeah, like you don't want to. Here's the thing with me and, and lemonade, right? I don't. You don't want to waste good space in that cup that with ice that can be filled with lemonade. So just um, you know, just, just do lemonade, and uh, and and I think you will you will enjoy it. If you enjoy the Turkey Hill, if you enjoy the Publix brand, you will like Chick-fil-A lemonade. It's great stuff. All right, um, next up, Alex B's in the house. He says, Ron, with any grass type for the last fertilization fertilizer application of the season. What specs are ideal? Should I just use Humic Max again? I've read conflicting opinions on the type of fert for final application. Here's the thing, Alex. You can do no fertile, you can do no fert at all, and I promise your grass will be just fine. It will grow in just fine. If you want to put down a fertilizer to, to continue to feed the lawn during the fall, um, Humic Max is a great option. Um, it's a it's a you know it's a good option to use uh, use on your lawn. Um, you have cool season grass, so you're still you're still gonna be actively feeding it. You know, you're still gonna be you're still gonna. I mean, you're not you're not like me where I just I'm gonna be putting down my last application. That's gonna be it. You're still your grass is still growing. You're still mowing it regularly. All this kind of stuff. So um so yeah, Humic Max is a great option. Um, if you have something else you want to try, that's fine too. But um but yeah, I mean it's uh, it it's you can do you can use your fertilizer of choice or you can do nothing and it will be fine either way. I promise. It'll just be greener if you put fertilizer on your lawn as it's beginning to close out. So, uh, great, great uh, question. All right, G Freeze in the house. He says, hey, Ron, another cool evening hanging out with the hashtag Stripe Action Gang. That's right, so I got my, my hashtag Stripe Action shirt with the Greens Master with the GM on the front, courtesy of Mr. Josh Abib. He sent me a custom shirt. I really do appreciate it, so it's pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, and then uh, Alex B is chiming in as well. He says that uh, Tariq, Seeds do need a lot of uh, both sun and water. Water most definitely. With a lot of rain, the risk is washout and erosion from the new seed. Once rooted in uh, slash set, the rain will be beneficial. So there you go. Water is a good thing. I got someone else backing me up on the cool season lawn as far as it needing uh, rain. And then, yeah, Dave also chiming in um, saying uh, does not need uh, – so he's saying that the, the, the seed does not need – the sun to germinate, it only needs water and see the soil in contact. Doesn't need the sun until there's leaf tissue. So there you go. So heat, water, um, and the biggest thing is water. Like most seeding projects fail because of water. Um, and adequate sunlight and seed. Uh, adequate sunlight also helps as well too. So uh, thanks for you guys uh, for the comments, for chiming in. Really do appreciate it. All right, next uh, we have Jave uh, Chis Pass, I think is what it is. Uh, that's, very, that's a cool avatar cat with the sunglasses. Pretty awesome. He says, I'm having a hard time getting rid of clover. What do you recommend to attack this issue? Depends on the grass you have, um, uh, J uh, Jave or Jave. Um, for cool season grass, I think Tenacity will take care of clover. I believe so. I think I'm almost positive if you mix it with Speed Zone, it will take care of clover and cool season lawns. 
For warm season grass, um, I think Spectracide is also um, labeled for clover. Let us see. Pretty positive. Yep, it is. So if you have a cool season, a warm season lawn, um, I'm gonna call you Jave. Cause you get the E is big, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put an accent on. It. I'm gonna say Jave. All right. If it's wrong, I apologize. So uh, so if Jave, if you have a warm, if warm season grass, something like this um, can work well. Uh, Spectracide. Um, we saw this is really cool because it's not that expensive. You're gonna be able to go out to like Wally World or Home Depot and, and find this tomorrow if you want. And it, it's it's like a a, a herbicide blend. Um, and one of the weeds that it is is labeled to control is um, is clover. You may have to do more than one application. So you may apply it, and then two, three weeks later, you may have to do a, another application. But if you're consistent with your apps, you know, spreading them out every few weeks, you should be able to knock it back with this product. So, um, so the the biggest thing with this is that people try to use that use spectricide one time, and they're like, oh, it didn't work. We have to realize like the rates um, that that are in that product are tend to be on the lower side. One because they try and price it for it being like ten, fifteen dollars, and then two because because it's targeted at homeowners and homeowners are notoriously bad for over applying um, products. They don't want you to damage your lawn or over apply um, you know, herbicide. So if you go with Spectracide, kind of go into it knowing that you're gonna have to do um, a couple of applications to, to get to get rid of the clover. If you have cool season grass, check out Princess Cut Lawn Care's video. So I can see if I can find it here really quick. Um, I'll see if I can find it for you real quick. And then, because he has a really good video on a concoction you can use that involves tenacity and speed zone that um, works really well on um, cool season grass. It's like the equivalent of my video for, um, for warm season grass where I mixed um, Celsius and certainty. So I am finding the video right here. And um, where is it? It is right here. There we go, cool. Yep, so this is the video, and um, let me pause, get rid of the sound, and I will I'll put this in uh, the chat for you, um, Jave. So you got two options. You got two options to go with. At Jave, boom. So check out, um, oops, I did that wrong. Check out George's, um, George's video and his other content. He's a really good creator, puts a lot of, good, a lot of great content. Hopefully that helps. All right, um, uh, next up, uh, Thin Cut says, glad you like the stickers, the mask and the stickers. See, they are funny. The physical therapists were like, I'm gonna have to ask who is on the mask, and they just laugh. They just laugh. Okay, all right. Um, uh, next up, we got uh, Lawn Journeys in the house saying, evening all, nice uh, fall evening here in New Jersey. Kentucky Bluegrass is happy. Yeah, man, all you cool season guys, this is your go time, right? This is your go time. So I'm glad that your lawn is doing well, Lawn Journeys. Thanks for taking a few minutes to stop into the live stream. Let me get down here and take this tour of the super chat from Mr. Travis Wilson. Got to do that real quick. Super chat received. He says, um, I second that Chick-fil-A will, uh, Chick will change your life. Hit that like button ever so gently. I appreciate that, Travis. You know, LG is not here. He's normally here for the, for the eight o'clock hour to, you know, to help support that, to sponsor the eight o'clock hour. But I'm glad that you are stepping up and you are um, are, are, are doing that. And if you guys don't mind um, supporting the channel, it's free for you guys to do, to touch that like button ever so gently. It's free, free for you to do. It's an easy way for to support the channel and it gives me a chance to take a sip of my lemonade. I, uh, I appreciate it, um, Travis. Yeah, I, do, I agree, man. Chick-fil-A lemonade is the truth. I always get the large, no ice, because I don't want ice taking up space that could be filled with lemonade, right? So I know it makes me weird, but so be it, right? So be it. All right, so next up, we have Thurston R in the house. There's a question about an overseed. He says, hey, Ron, I'm 23 days out from my tall fescue KBG overseed and the second mow to come tomorrow. Awesome, sounds like it, you got some good, uh, like it, it, everything's growing in nicely. This is my lawn, it's filling in really nicely. Wondering if it's okay to do a Milo app after I mow tomorrow, thanks again. Yeah, you sh absolutely should. Throw some Milo down, man, it's not, not gonna hurt anything. If you, um, if you if you can actually find it, uh, yeah, use it. My, again, Milorga is still a great fertilizer. It's just gotten it's gotten a bit expensive for what it is. But if Milo's your um, your you know your vintage of choice for your lawn, then by all means, after the mow, that is the time to uh, to throw it down. Go ahead and uh, and do that. And congrats on your uh, your fescue and KBG overseed uh, doing doing well. All right, brisket is in the house. Brisket, do you like brisket? Is that why I guess you do? You make a good brisket. <laughs> Says I just bought a new house, um, and the backyard is covered in small rocks near the surface. Is it safe to add topsoil for this scenario? Um, you could, but I man, I would try to it, without seeing the seeing what you consider to be small rocks. 
Um, I, I try and get rid of some of it if I could, brisket, because, you know, roots don't grow through rocks um, as well as they do through soil. So, yes, putting down a layer of topsoil is, is that's definitely an option, but I might get like a um, like a light rake if it's they're, if they're small, like a light rake and try and get a lot of the, the, the surface rocks out, like or like rake them up into a pile and take them out because... You know, you don't want to have to deal with, um, you know, rock. I mean, rocks in the lawn is something you just want to avoid if you can. And if you can physically see a bunch there, I would I would try and get rid of them um, before doing what sounds like a light top dressing. Um, that is what I would do. I would not just throw, um, you know, dirt down on or, or topsoil just on top of it. You can. It'll probably be fine. But why not? You know, if you can go through all that work. Why not take like, you know, 30 minutes, an hour and give yourself the best chance for success by by removing as many of the loose rocks that, that are near the surface as, as you can. That is what I would do. So hopefully that helps. Um, and thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. I think you're new to the chat. At least I think it's the first time I've seen your name. So uh, I appreciate you coming to hang out on a Friday night with us. All right, A9 Modi's in the house. Says, if a lawn has 50% weeds, mostly spurge and poa, is it still okay to do aeration and overseeding uh, a tall fescue in the fall. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can still do, you can still aerate the lawn. Um, I might also um, spray something on them. You know, if it's 50% weeds, like half, half spurge and half poa, I might put down like a, um, like a post-emergent herbicide. Um, something like tenacity would probably be okay. Tenacity and speed zone, that combination would probably be fine. Um, that would be a, because um, yes, you can do the, you can do the overseed, um, but you know, why not also not, why not knock the weeds back with the weeds back a little bit so that the new grass you're trying to get to grow in, which sounds like tall fescue has the best chance, right? That's, that is what I would do. I, I would, um, I would do a, a, a post-emergent, um, herbicide. Again, sounds like, um, something like tenacity would work well for what you're doing. Um, and then do your aeration and overseed and all that, all that stuff. So hopefully that helps. Appreciate you coming to chime in. All right, um, let's see here. Dave's Lawn Vlog says, how much total N do you apply to your Bermuda lawn? Um, I try to keep it to around four to five pounds for over the entire season. This year I've been trying to run the lawn lower. I try to run, I try to run as, as, as little N as I can um, and still get a good result. So to give you a good example, um, starting in um, April, April, so yeah, starting in April, I started feeding the lawn at like um, seven to eight tenths of a pound of nitrogen per month, thereabouts. So um, half a, just under half a pound of that, Dave, came, fr came from granular. Um, and the rest of it is from like liquid, liquid, um, liquid fert. Uh, and that's what I've done throughout, throughout the season. So four to five pounds of N is what I tend, is what I tend to do. Um, and again, this year I've been running probably a little bit lower than that. Uh, because I'm just, just, I like to play, I like to test and see how, like, how low can I go and still have the lawn look great, which is also going to, you know, not, not push a ton of growth whenever temperatures get, um, get crazy hot, um, in the, uh, in the lawn, in the lawn. All right. Uh, hopefully that helps, um, answer your question. All right. Um, C math is in the house. He's like, yo, gotta do it. Gotta say, read the way he says this. Yo, thank God it's Friday. I'm late to the party, but you're here. He says, uh, keep up the great work, seeded last week, and now I have one inch grass. We'll be growing, we'll be mowing next week. You must be, um, maybe you probably did, probably rye. I'm guessing it's rye. If you did it, if you put down grass and it's already, you seeded and it's already an inch a week later, that's probably rye grass is what I'm thinking, um, is what I'm thinking it is. Um, um, but yeah, that, that is what I'm thinking it is. Um, okay, let's see what else we, uh, we got here. We got Tom uh, Lubinsky in the house. He says, um, hey, Ron, I wanted to follow up um, from my question last week at the end of the Q&A on Poanua in cool season turf, uh, looking for a cool, um, looking for pre and post-emergent help. Okay, so for pre-emergent help, um, prodiamine is a good option. That's what we can go with. Um, hang on one second here. Um, let me uh, answer answer a question. All right, done. All right, so uh, prodiamine is what I would go with for your pre-emergent. That's a great option for your post-emergent on cool season. Um, I want to say ten tenacity. Well, tenacity and or speed zone target po poa. Um, I am not sure on that. I'd have to check the label for tenacity to know if it will actually go after poa in cool season turf. I'm not, I'm not sure on that, but the, the biggest thing, the best way to prevent it is using something like prodiamine. Like prodiamine is very, is very effective, um, for that. 
Um, so that's that would be my recommendation, Tom. If you've not um, put down your pre-emergent as yet, do that. Um, and then um, for a post-emergent, uh, Tenacity Speed Zone is um, a good concoction that that uh, people get a pretty good result with. That is what I would um, would would uh, would go with. And as far as a good video to see how to mix that, um, check out George's content, Princess Cut Lawn Care's content. Um, I will um, give you a link to that right here at Tom. This is the video where he did the equivalent of what I did for warm season grass. He did one for cool season grass. So check out that video. That will um, that will that will take care of it. Hopefully that helps. All right, Alex B's in the house. He says around hundred uh, watching at this time of this comment. Let's get some more likes for Ron giving us great lawn care knowledge live most every week. I, I really do appreciate it. Thanks so much. Um, and then um, Tom uh, Lubinsky says, um, Bear Progress was recommended by someone else, looked into it, but that's like $500. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of really good, um, a lot of really, really, really good um, herbicides that, are, that, are, that, are, that work well, but are also super expensive, right? Um, so that's why like prodiamine, even though people like to, I don't say like to hate on it, but it's like, a, you know, it's, it's one of the more basic ones, it's, and it's economically priced you can get a good result with prodiamine. Like Alex's lawn has only had prodiamine on it um, in late January, early February when we did it. We did it super early just to test it. Um, and he didn't have any problems with um, with weeds in his lawn, any, any warm season weeds in his lawn this year, right? So, um, so yeah, I mean, Bear Progress, I'm sure it's an awesome product, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be expensive. Kind of like we start getting into like, the Cadillac products like Spectacle Flow for warm season grass, like that's an awesome, awesome uh, pre-emergent, but it's also super expensive, right? It's like, I think you can get it for 270, 280 for a bottle of it. That's for the small bottle. So it's just very, very expensive stuff. Very effective, but also very expensive. So uh, hopefully that helps. And then Demir91 is in uh, the house is uh, Thurston R, I'm a golf course super, and yes, apply your application. I like to apply my FERT same day as overseas so those nutrients have time to break down and be plant available as seedlings emerge. There you go. Thanks for the uh, for the feedback, uh, Demir. Um, thank you for that. Much, much appreciated. All right. Uh, Thomas Han has a question about leveling or something else. Let's see what he says here. He says, um, does the lawn feel firmer when walking if you use sand to level it? The areas um, that I have have heavy weeds. It feels mushy, and you can sink in when you, when walking. It sounds like you might have a bit of a, a bit of thatch um, going on in the lawn, Thomas. Um, does sand make the lawn firm? Make the the turf firmer? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it does. It does. I mean, I guess firmer firmer is subjective. Does it feel? Does it feel like walking on a sidewalk? No. But does it feel um, like firmer than a lawn that's really thick and spongy from a lot of thatch? Yes. Um, so it sounds like what you've got, and you didn't tell, tell me how high your lawn is, like how high you're cutting it or anything like that. Um, um, but I would, I would guess that, um, it sounds like you have like a, like a thatch problem is why it feels spongy and mushy, um, is what I would, would go with without even looking at it. Um, so if you do, if you put some sand down, like you start building up some structure that will help. Um, also, Considering perhaps like dethatching, dethatching the lawn, getting rid of some of that loose dead material that that that, that um all that thatch buildup will help things as well. But yes, um, sand will help add some structure to the uh, the lawn. It should make it a little bit firmer uh, to walk on. Uh, great question, great question. Um, and Andrew seventy seven is chiming in on A Modi's question or uh, his his comment where he says um. He says, uh, personally, I would deal with weeds first, possibly even postponing seedings till next season. Seeds will have a tough time competing with established weeds. That's what I'm thinking, man. I mean, you still got time, but I would definitely, at a minimum, smack the weeds with something to knock them back if you're still going to go with seeding this season. I would not, like, try and seed the lawn, um, especially since you, said, since you said it's, like, half weeds. Um, let's do something about that before we spend a bunch of time and money, um, you know, both seeding the lawn and watering it to try and get, get it to grow in. So uh, great, great comment, Andrew. I appreciate that. I really do appreciate that. I see uh, Thurston and Demer going back and forth. Um, next up, we got Chewy Chews here in uh, the house. It says, hi, Ron. I bought some Anderson's uh, 0.048 Barricade Granular. Next year, I want to do a split app in the spring and a fall app. What should be my um, my per thousand rate per app? Uh, the bag says 4.8, 4.7 pounds max yearly on KBG. I'd have to look at the label, man, because with the granular, um, 
Um, with the granulars, I don't, I, I mean, so let's see, your, your entire rate, your max for the year is 4.7 pounds. So if you are gonna do, um, so split up spring and fall, so just half it. So if you wanna, if, you, if I'm reading this correctly and you wanna use barricade, you wanna use prodiamine in the spring and then in the fall, do half in the spring and then do half in the fall. Um, if you're trying to do like what I really think about when it comes to split app, so like half of the spring rate early in the spring and then another half of the spring rate a little bit later in the spring, you could take that 4.7, um, divide that in half and then do half of that. So take a so, so do like a quarter, quarter. So quarter early in the spring, qu another quarter later on in the spring, and then late, save the remaining half of that 4.7 until the fall. And then you should be, um, then you should be good to go. So hopefully, um, hopefully that, uh, that helps, helps answer your question. But I had to look at the label to, to, to look at it for to see for sure. But based on what you're saying, just doing some quick math, that is what I would, um, I would do. All right, um, uh, and then Demir, uh, Demir's chiming in to Thomas Hanna. He says, no, think of a USGA golf green constructed almost all of all sand and is top dressed bi-weekly. Uh, sand dilutes thatch and firms up the profile, making it more firm. So there you go, yeah. So it's, um, so sand is only gonna help, is only, only gonna help the situation, um, not hurt it. So yeah, thank you for, for chiming in, uh, Demir. I, I do appreciate that. I'll have to see sometime, man. If you're not camera shy, I may have to see about getting you on the live stream sometime and just, just pick your brain. Just have someone from industry on and just we'll just talk about long care stuff. If you're up to it, you know, if you're one, if you're up to it. If not, that's fine too. But I mean, it's uh, it'd be interesting to 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 just just pick your brain and hear about like what you guys go through weekly or monthly on a golf course. All right. Uh Will Ward is in the house where he says, Hey Ron, I usually cut at five eighths. And for the past month, I've been getting some scalping where I have not in the past. Do you think I have to top dress every year to avoid scalping at that height of cut? Um, not necessarily. I, I might raise the height of cut up a little bit, Will. When you're going into the late summer um, and into the, it, mainly late summer, not so much fall, but into the late summer, if you don't start picking up your mowing frequency because the grass is growing faster when it's hot, um, you are more prone to get scalping. So in other words, like if you're running at five eighths and you were cutting, say, twice a week, which you probably weren't, but let's say you're doing twice a week in like May, June. Like twice a week is not gonna be enough in July, August at that same height because the grass is gonna be growing faster. That's why you start seeing scalping um, issues. So you have a choice. You can either mow more, which you probably don't wanna do, or you can raise the height of cut up a little bit and that's gonna buy you a bit more headroom as far as maintaining your same mowing schedule um, while not also, um, but also not getting, um, some scalp as well, uh, scalping in your lawn. All right. Um, next up we got, um, East, um, Tennessee Lawn Care says, Hey man, what's going on? East Tennessee Lawn Care. Thanks for coming to hang out and, uh, saying, uh, Hey, all right. Um, Lois H is in the house as a question. It says, um, Hi, Ron. Happy Friday. I got pre-emerged down this week. Just ordered Magical soil test. Showed low pH. How much should I apply? I have a big patch of clover. Treat now or wait. Okay, so if you have low soil pH, Magical can help. Um, but if you have a way to get like lime in bulk, um, that's a great way um, and really a more cost-effective way to raise your pH um, than using Magical. Magical is a good product. It's, it's, I'm not, I'm not like hating on it. I mean, I have it in the golf course lawn store and if you want to buy it, I'm more than, um, I definitely would appreciate it. But as far as, um, if your pH is like, say your pH is like really low, like you're like in like low fives, um, you know, doing an application of lime at 20 pounds or to 40 pounds per thousand, like that is more cost effective to do with like lime, like either a calcitic or a dolomitic lime than it is using um, something like Magical. So I don't have your soil test results, so I don't know how low low pH is, but um, but yeah, Magical will definitely help. If you can also get your hand on some um, some lime, um, that is that's is a good option too. The way to know which one to go with, in your soil test results, if your magnesium levels are low, so if those are like below the optimal range or outside the optimal range, that's when you wanna choose dolomitic lime, like the one that starts with D, um, if your magnesium levels are fine, then just go with calcitic lime. So that's how you can choose between those two. You can use either one, you're gonna get a good result, but if your magnesium is low, going with dolomitic um, is, is a better choice than, um, than uh, calcitic. All right, um, uh, next up, we have a question here from Mark Houston. And again, it's, I'm gonna have to see your soil test result, man. He says, um, hey, I hey, Ron, I received my soil test results. My nitrogen is low, 2.75. Can I add nitrogen this late in the season? Eastern North Carolina. Um, potassium, sulfur, calcium, um, um, magnesium are low. 
Um, suggestions on when and what to amend the soil. Um, it would be way better if you sent me your soil test results so I can actually take a look at them. Um, uh, Mark, as far as you didn't say what your pH is, you didn't see what your pH is, and you didn't, you didn't also didn't say what your grass type is. So if it were, if you had cool season grass, Mark, I'd be more prone to like doing um, like adding a bit more nitrogen to try and correct things. But if you have like a warm season lawn like Bermuda. Um, you know, it's one of those things where I would just take the knowledge you have now and apply that towards what you're going to start doing in the spring. In other words, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't push a ton of nitrogen in the lawn um, this late in the season, assuming you have warm season grass. But if you don't mind, send me an email with your soil test results to ron at golfcourselawn.com. I'll take a look at it and I will get you a result. I'll get you my, uh, my thoughts on the matter. All right. Um, next up, we have... Um, um, Siraj, actually I actually have a question from Master Live, but I, I give me two Sirajas first. He says, hey, Ron, everyone, uh, two questions. Is Miramichi Green Pest Control okay for indoor use? And then two, how do you winterize your Green Master? Okay, so it's not labeled for indoor use. And I asked them about that. I, and they said, I said, can you, can you spray it indoors? And they say, the reason why we tell people not to spray it indoors is because the oils in it will leave like an oil residue in the areas that you spray it. So it could be like a slipping hazard and, and those kinds of things. Is it like toxic? Is it going to cause a problem if you spray it inside? No. Um, but it's not labeled for indoor use mainly because like if you get it on glass, you get it on, you know, again, it's, it's, it has oils in it. So, um, you know, you could, you could create like a, a situation where someone could slip and fall and hurt themselves. Um, but as far as it being like toxic or, or bad to use indoors, that's, that's, the, that's the primary reason why um, the product is mainly labeled for outdoor use. So it's, um, so that's question one. Question two, how do I winterize my greens master? I take it and get it serviced. So um, here, not right now, but probably like closer to November, it'll go down to the nice folks at Jerry Pate. They will sharpen it to the oil change, do like the full service, check belts, any of that kind of stuff. Um, get it all nice and good and, and, and good to go. Set the height of cut on it. Um, anything else that needs to be done to it. And then when I get it back, I just wrap, I wrap the, the, the mower in plastic, just the, like the engine and reel and, and bed knife area, wrap it in plastic and I leave it and it's, I just have it set for the rest of the season. As far as things that I, um, that I also do is I start running, I've already started doing it actually, I start running only ethanol-free gas in the mower as the season gets to the end. I mean, if you can run ethanol-free gas year round, that's probably best, but definitely as you get closer to the end of the season, if you're gonna leave the gasoline in the mower, you, you, don't, you don't wanna use um, gas with ethanol in it because it, it, it tends to attract water and can um, can gum up the, the, the fuel system. So, um, you know, if you, if, you, if you don't do that, use something like Stable or some other like, um, uh, like fuel stabilizer, that's an option too. Or you could just drain the tank, that's also another option. But what I just tend to do is I, leave, I do leave gas in the mower over the winter, I just make sure it's just ethanol-free gas. Um, and then outside of that, I just get it serviced and cover, cover it all up. All right. Um, that's up. So you get NASCAR Life here is asking a question. He says, hey, Ron, if a bag of fertilizer has elements that are in oxide form, I was told these elements can be taken in. Can you explain oxide elements um, like iron oxide? No, I cannot. Next question. All right. Um, next up, we got East Tennessee Lawn Care says, how do you get grass to grow in red clay? Um... It, well, I mean, if anything to East Tennessee Lawn Care, it, it, anything you can do to, to, to break up the compaction at the surface would be good. Um, what I might do is I, I might aerate the lawn, do a light top dressing with topsoil so you have like a really nice rich bed for this, for this grassy that you're trying to, to put in to germinate in. Um, and that would be, that would be, you should be good to go at that point, assuming you're putting enough water on it. Now, if we're talking about like sod, like sod will grow in on clay soil. So if you're just talking about sod, just again, just prep the, prep the lawn, or prep the, the soil, um, fairly similarly. You don't necessarily need to air or do anything like that. But, um, you know, if you're put, trying to sod on top of a, on top of clay soil, there's no problems at all with that. Uh, it's only whenever you're doing seeding that I might, um, I might do a light top dressing with um, with some topsoil to hold on to the seeds a bit better because red clay, like water just tends to run off of it. It doesn't absorb water as well as like like actual topsoil does. So that might be the only thing uh, that I would um, that I would change. All right, uh, next up, Andrew77 has a question about Carbon Pro G. He says, hey, Ron, I just bought a bag of Carbon Pro G at site one and keeping it for next season. Will the microbial package in there be fine and effective if I do not use it until early next spring? Yes, you'll be absolutely fine. No problems at all. Just make sure you keep it somewhere where it's obviously not getting wet. Just keep it in your garage, dry, cool spot, um, and you're you're good to go. Yeah, no problems at all um, with that, um, Andrew. 
And then uh, Troy Ridley says, do I have fungus or just not enough water? I don't have a picture of your lawn, so I can't answer that, Troy. Um, it could be either. I mean, I, I'm not sure what kind of damage you're talking about that makes you think that um, it could be a fungus problem. If it's if across the lawn, like across the entire lawn, um, like the color is getting less good and it's just, it, it's like, in other words, if it's, a, if it's a widespread issue, it could be water. If it's localized where it's like a splotchy spot and the lawn looks dead or like, like it looks like something is killing it, killing the grass, that could be a fungus problem. Um, I forget what kind of grass you have. I'm not sure if you told me whether you have warm season grass or cool season grass, but if you have Bermuda, know that this time of year, the lawn is going to start losing its color. It's not gonna look as good as it did like during the summer, um, like the late spring and summer months. Like now is when Bermuda's starting to, um, to, to fall back to fall back a bit. So um, without pictures, I can't really answer it. If you want to send me a picture, you can send it to here, ron at golfcourselawn.com. I'll take a look at it and I will get you an answer. I'll let you know what I think. Uh, great, great uh, question. All right. Um, next up, we got Juan and Henriquez in the house. He says, what's the best fall pre-emergent? Um, what's the best fall pre-emergent for fall in Bermuda turf? And what's the best post-emergent for POA control? Can you use Turfplex as your only fur? Okay, so a lot in that. Probably the best fall pre-emergent, um, in my opinion, the best fall fall pre-emergent, because you didn't give me any, you didn't give me any budget. Um, no, if money's no object, probably spectacle flow. Um, probably spectacle flow. Um, um, the uh, so I can find it here. I mean, the, ing the active ingredient in that is in in Dazaflam. I think is what it's called. In Dazaflam, it's very. Yep, here we go. So I can find that. I can show you right here. Um, Spectacle Flow is an awesome, awesome, awesome pre-emergent. Coastal, according to some studies I've been looking at, is supposed to be as good. It's supposed to be as good. Um, and it's a, it's a fraction of the price. So if you look at, or it's like half the price anyway. If you look here, you see um, Spectacle Flow, like Do My Own has it for 250, but they actually have it out of stock. Um, every other place I've looked online, they've had it for like two, um, anywhere between this price, 250 and 300, is what you'd expect to pay for this. So it's it's, it's expensive. It's pricey, right? So it's, it's a Cadillac pre-emergent, but it's probably one of the best ones to use on warm season turf if you can um, if you can spring for it. Um, another option <clears throat> that I'm trying out this year is this one, Coastal. Um, this one is Prodiamine as a pre-emergent, but it also has Imazequin and Simazine in it, so two post-emergents that um, will target POA. So I, I'm going. I went with this one because one, it's more economical, and then there's some studies that have been done show that it produces results that are on par with um, with a spectacle flow, at least from a standpoint of controlling poa in warm season grass. So that's why I'm giving it a shot this year. So it's your it's your call, um, Juan. Um, spectacle spectacle is is like you know if I had to say one that's definitely going to work and be awesome, spectacle flow. But if you want to give a um, have an option that according to research, does well and is like half the price, um, you can give um, Coastal a shot. The only negative to Coastal, I'd really say, is that it's the, the places where it's labeled for, like where, the places you can actually buy it, it's a pretty, it's, it's not, there's not a lot of states where they actually will ship it to. So that's the one thing. But if you're in Georgia, you can get it. And if you want to try that out, um, I will put a link in the description here for Coastal. So at one, um, there you go, for Coastal, um, uh, herbicide. And also if you want to see a video as far as how to mix it, um, I did a video earlier this week that shows that. So you get the product and you also get a how to um, mix uh, pre-emergent. So either one of those should um, should help out. Great, great question. Oh, actually, no, you had a question about Turfplex. Can you use Turfplex as your only fur? Yeah, you, you can. Um, you can, but it's, I mean, you'd have to apply it at, at, a, at a heavier rate than I'm, I'm applying it at. Um, and I just, I am, a, I am more of a fan of using a granular for like something like Humic Max as like the base to do most of the feeding, mainly because it also does a better job of also in, increasing the nitrogen levels in the soil than like a, a foliar um, fertilizer application does, right? So you can do it if you want, but I would, um, I would do a, a blend like a granular and Turfplex um, versus just doing Turfplex alone. Like it is labeled for rates um, as high as like 15 ounces per thousand. That seems really high to me because I've seen what like six ounces per thousand will do. Um, but if you wanna give it a shot, give it a shot and give it, you try it out and let me know how it works. I'm sure it's gonna be fine as long as you apply it with enough water. But um, but yeah, it's, uh, I, I would do a blend of products if it were me. That's what I've, that's what I've done and I've gotten great results with. 
Okay, uh, next up we got Mr. Mazama Blue in the house. He's got a two part question. He says, part one. Hey Ron, happy Friday. Happy Friday, Mazama. He says, uh, KBG loving the spoons of uh, Turf Flex with soil temps and 68 degrees. My back lawn, uh, the part that's shade, is seeing powdery mildew again and the front lawn, full shade, um, or full sun, just developed rust yesterday, two of two. I'm backing off the end in the back, but we'll continue pushing in the front as it keeps growing one inch, um, one inch every three days and spreading. Should I give it a shot of propiconazole at a preventative rate? Thoughts? Yeah, I would. Yeah, if you want to put some propiconazole down um, for the powdery mildew and also just as a preventative, go for it, man. Um, yeah, I think you did the right thing in the areas where you're starting to see fungus um, pressure, fungus issues backing off. Um, um, pushing a lot of nitrogen is, is a, is a good strategy. Um, and if you've already got propiconazole and you want to, you know, put some down as a preventative, not a bad, not a bad plan at all. Not a bad plan at all, man. Yep. That is what I would do. All right. Next up, Robert Rainey says, Ron, um, is the best time of year to test, uh, soil as far as pH check winter? There's not really a best time. I mean, the only thing I would say is, um, no, I mean, you can, you can do that whenever. You do that whenever you want, really, Robert. Um, it's really around when you're trying to measure other nutrient levels. So if you're trying to measure like nitrogen or like any, any of the macros, like doing it after there's been four weeks or ideally a little bit longer from your last fertilizer application is when, is what I would say. But as far as like pH, you can do that whenever you want. And again, the, the soil test that I use and love um, is the one from my soil. Um, it's a great one. It's it's an e like one of the, the first things they show on the soil test results are um, our pH. The results are super easy to read, super easy to interpret. I'm not sure if you're already using these or not. If I've looked at a soil test result from you before, but for anyone that's looking for a soil test, um, my soil is the um, the one that that I like that I like to use on my lawn. And I'm actually going to be doing that, getting samples on for my lawn um, before doing my fertilizer app um, to get my fall my fall numbers. So. So yeah, no, no real best time whenever, as whenever you, whenever you want to, because it's not pH is not, not really, um, not that is not as sensitive as like say measuring um, like your macros. Great question, man. Uh, let's see what else we got. We got uh, Daryl in the house. He says, um, he says, hey Ron, I don't have any questions. I'm just enjoying the live stream. Why? Because the Golf Course Lawn Academy is all the answers one has. Uh, one on one with Ron is amazing. Um, amazing information. People need to join. I appreciate it, Daryl. Um, yeah, it is a group. It is a good group of guys and gals in the Golf Course Lawn Academy. We do have a great time. Um, you know, talking about lawn care, talking about mowers, what people are doing, and just um, it's it's a it's a fun time. So I I'm glad that you're getting you're getting a lot of value out of it, um, and that uh, you know that your lawn looks awesome. So I, I've seen the pictures. Anyone want to see uh, Daryl's lawn? So let me show you his lawn from. Uh, from over this summer. This is what it looked like over the summer. If uh, this will load, let's see. Yeah, so that was his lawn um, using the program that I teach in the Golf Course Lawn Academy. Of course, coupled with tons and tons of mowing and everything, all his hard work, but uh, but yeah. I appreciate the uh, the endorsement, Daryl. I uh, very, very much um, appreciate it. All right, um, next up, Aaron Metzler is in the house. He says, hey, I have Bermuda and Bahia in Centipede. I found the magic mix. Do tell, Aaron. He says, I, it's tenacity and cethoxidim, which is it kills all but centipede. No question, just following up on info from a previous question. I love the live stream. I appreciate it, Aaron. Thanks for letting us know what um, what uh, ended up being the, uh, in your case, like you say, the, the magic mix for your particular grass type. Glad to hear that that, uh, that, that worked out well for you, man. Uh, next up, Robert is in the house. He says, um, almost forgot the hat and stickers are awesome. Stickers are on the spreader and the hat is being used uh, doing what we enjoy doing most. That's awesome, man. I'm glad that you're putting it to good use. Very, very good. Um, David Lee, my island brother, saying, hey, Ron Henry, stay blessed, brethren. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for coming to hang out. And uh, again, Daryl, thanks again for the endorsement, talking about um, the Humic Max and Turfplex and Nutrizol. That's a good thing. I haven't spoken about um, Turfplex and Nutrizol. The nice thing about both those for about those products, like Turfplex is your is your base fertilizer, right? It's a twenty two three formulation. I think that's correct. Yep. So this is like your base fert um, um, application that you would use in a spoon feeding program, as far as like a liquid goes. But the thing about it is it's missing some of the micronutrients. So the product that, that um, Daryl is talking about, Nutrizolve, like you can mix that along with Turfplex at a, at a low rate. Like the label calls for like six ounces per thousand, kind of like this. But if you're using it along with Turfplex, um, you really don't need to go that heavy. Like the bottle will last longer, like three to four ounces is gonna be plenty 
to um, to act as a filler as far as a micronutrient um, stack as well. And I do have both of those at the golf course lawn source. For any of you guys that have cool season lawns and you're looking to do some spoon feeding, you can get both Turfplex and uh, Nutrizol, the products that Daryl was talking about um, at the golf course lawn store. All right, so we got Mr. LG in the house. Thank you, LG. I, was, I thought we were gonna miss you, man. Super chat received. Is I'm here, I'm here, was elbows deep in some raw brisket uh, preparation, no joke but I'm still here to sponsor that 7 p.m. sip. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. This is oh, and congrats on crushing the 30,000 subscriber mark. Yeah, man, that's pretty awesome, right? That's pretty awesome. Yeah, we crossed um, 30,000 subscribers on the channel. That is a huge milestone. It's pretty awesome. And uh, I thank you guys so much for all the love and support, um, for trusting me a bit of, with a bit of your time. And yeah, upwards and onward, man. We're just gonna keep going and we'll see, see where things go. Thank you so much for the uh, Super Chat, LG. Super Chat uh, 20 bucks. Thank you so much for um, all the love and support, man. And uh, that brisket, man. You got to send me a picture of what the brisket looks like um, once it's once it's rolling. And then uh, Joseph uh, Scarpin, Scarpinato says, uh, T-Zone SE works good. I think that was probably a question um, to the question about Clover. Is that is that right, um, Joseph? I'm not sure which one that was for, but uh, thank you for, uh, for, chiming, for chiming in. All right, next up, um, M. Canone uh, says, is propiconazole safe to use on three-week-old turf-type tall fescue seedlings? I, I'm either starting to see signs of tenacity, uh, I'm starting to see signs of tenacity, or maybe have over-watered and seeing fungus. I'm in Rhode Island, 67 degree nights. Is fungus a problem? You're saying you're starting to see signs of tenacity. I'm not sure what you, um, what you mean by that. I guess you're starting to see like the, the weeds are starting to turn, like they're starting to lose their color. From spraying tenacity, is that what you mean by, uh, by that meant M. Canone? Um, as far as propiconazole on three-week-old turf-type tall fescue, I'm not sure, man. We'd have to look at the label and see. I, I'm, I'm inclined to say yes, it's probably fine, but check the label. Check the label and see if there's any restrictions as far as um, how much time you need to give between like new grass and spraying pro or, and applying uh, propiconazole. The label will will uh, will definitely spell that out. And it is, it is possible you could have a fungus problem. Um, I haven't seen the damage that you're having in the lawn because you're talking about tenacity, which is a herbicide, but then you're talking about, um, you also mentioned fungus, so, or potentially fungus. So I'm not sure um, about the question, but, um, but yeah, check the label on propiconazole. Um, if you are having a, a fungus issue, propiconazole is a good fungus to, a, a fungicide to apply. Assuming that after you check the label, it's, face, it's safe to use on new grass, which it probably is. But um, but just check just to um, to be to be sure. All right. Next up, we got Alex B. He says I definitely have another month or two of fertilizer asked for the last application. Was just curious on the end of the season fert. Um, having read differing opinions on that lately. Thanks for the info, Ron. Yeah, I think you can go either way, Alex B. I mean, it's not it's not gospel. Um, you know, if your lawn is still actively growing and, and doing well, like it still looks like it's you're still mowing it as often as you ever have is, since fall came in. Um, then yeah, keep doing your fertilizer apps. And as, as things begin to fall off, like it, like you're about to start getting hard freezes where the grass is gonna start falling back, then just back off on it, you know? Um, so hopefully that helps. And again, I, I don't think it's a, a life-changing decision either way. William, man, I appreciate the uh, the super chat, man. I'm gonna give you a super chat. Super chat received. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, I really do. All right, um, next up, um, we got Corey um, Binion says, after herbicide has killed the weeds, how do I get rid of the dead the dead weeds? Um, I tend not do I don't I tend to not do anything about them, Corey. Um, I just once they're dead, I just mow over them and let's let them break down. If you really want to like go out there with a rake and and try and break them out, um, you can. But uh, you know I've not I've not done that. A good example like um, Alex's lawn. If you guys saw the video that I did on Poa this spring because he because he didn't do any fall pre emergent last year. Um, uh, he had a bunch of poe in his lawn this spring. So um, when we sprayed, we first did um, image and then we also did negate. Um, and then once the poa died off, we didn't like get out there and, and go and pull out all the dead poa. We just, just kept mowing the lawn and just, just you know, life goes on. It's dead, so you don't, no, no reason to really do anything. So if you want to get rid of it, you want to try and rake it out, you can. But I, in the past, we've not done that. I've just, I've just if it's dead, just, just move on. All right. Um, let's see what else we um, see what else we uh, we have here. 
Um, um, let's see, Lois has a question saying they're an esthetician um, about sending me something. I mean, Lois, if you want to send, if you want to reach out to me, my email address is this, it's ron at golfcourselon.com. Just send send me an email there of what it is you're, you're talking about and I can, um, we can, we can go from there. All right. Um, and, I, and again, Corey, yeah, same thing. Um, you know, you sprayed Celsius, the weed's dead. How do you get rid of them? Lawn looks bad right now. You can, I mean, just keep up with your mowing, man. Just mow, mow the lawn. It's about to go, you're, you're about to go into dormancy here soon anyways. So I really wouldn't worry about it. Um, because anything you're going to do as far, it's, it's going to require a ton of work as far as like getting rid of the, the now dead weeds. Um, I would just just mow it, man. Just mow, mow the lawn and not not really sweat it too much. It's not going to hurt anything. This is what I'm trying to say. All right. Uh, Connor Souls is, is ch chiming in with a super chat. Thank you so much, Connor. Super chat. Received. He says, what's up, Ron? I'm at a wedding right now. You're at a wedding and you're on the live stream. Man, you're going to get in trouble. You better not be there with a date or anything. You're going to get, I, I do not want anybody coming after me because you're not paying attention to the bride and groom and the wedding party because of uh, lawn care live stream. I appreciate it though. He says, I had to join for a minute to show my support. I really do appreciate that, Connor. It's pretty awesome. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I'll catch the video tomorrow. Yeah, and that's that's pretty awesome. So for anyone that is um, that you guys don't know, I also leave these up. So they're they're on for you to watch if you if you miss it tonight. You don't get to obviously if you watch tomorrow, you're not gonna get to ask, ask questions live or get to cut up with this live, but um, it's still gonna be available for you to listen to on your way to work or whatever else you're doing. So uh, so yeah, I appreciate it, Connor, and hope the wedding is going well. Make sure you cut a leg, get out there, show your moves on the dance floor. Okay, and then uh, Robert Rainey says, as far as pre-emergent, I've been told to alternate from time to time because the resistance can build. Any perspective to this? Yeah, so that is a thing. Um, Prodiamine isn't one that, um, at least on my lawn and at least lawns around here, because pretty much what they're spraying on, on most of these lawns it is Prodiamine. Um, I've not really personally seen any issues with um, with it forming resistance. Probably, again, kind of going back to spectacle flow, like, again, the Cadillac of, or one of the Cadillac uh, pre-emergence. Like, from what I understand, there's not really any known resistance or any um, weeds that have formed known resistances to um, spectacle flow. But again, you're paying for it, right? It's like anything else in life. Like, you really want the, you want the really good stuff. Um, it's going to cost you. So um, this price at 250 you might be able to find it somewhere else online for that. I mean, do my own doesn't have it in stock. It's like they discontinued it. Um, but there, you might be able to find it in other places. The only negative to Spectacle is that it's expensive, but it's a very, very good um, pre-emergent. As far as like one for warm season grass, it's, it's about as good as you can, as about as good as you can go um, for for uh, for pre-emergent. So yeah, so altering, you know, alternating is not a bad idea if you want to do like dimension in this in the in the spring and prodiamine in the fall or vice versa. That can work too. But mixing things up is not a bad idea. Kind of like the, um, the same thing with. Um, with fungicides, they say that they can also like some fungus or some lawn fungi can form resistance over time if you keep using the same fungicide over and over. But prodiamine has been pretty, pretty good so far. It's been pretty good. But great question, um, Robert. There is something to that, so alternate if you uh, if you can. All right, uh, Dalvin Larry says it's a good question. He says, "What are the pros and cons of coastal over straight prodiamine?" I have prodiamine already and ha that, that I have not applied, but if coastal will kill the pre-existing weeds, is it worth a try? Um, spurgeon crabgrass. Yeah, I'm not sure if, if, um, if the big thing I, I, you'd be targeting with um, coastal, Dalvin, is, um, is POA, right? So if you, the nice thing about like with prodiamine is that just straight prodiamine will prevent germination of POA going forward after application. So after you apply it, you water it in, like it's going to, to severely limit Poe's ability to germinate um, after application. The idea behind um, behind Coastal is that it has prodiamine as the pre-emergent, but it also has simazine and amazequin. So I can find it here, I lost it. So if I can find um, the label here so I can actually show you. Um, simazine and amazequin, which, um, which are both post-emergent herbicides that will kill any POA that's germinated. Because there's already people that, um, like I've already gotten pictures from people already that have POA growing in their lawns, right? So if you waited till now to do pre-emergent, um, it's still gonna be effective, but it's not gonna do very much for the POA, it's not gonna do anything really, for the POA that's already started coming in. The idea behind um, coastal is that you're gonna kill the stuff going forward, and any like young um, uh, POA that's in the lawn, it's also gonna kill it. It can, controls other stuff too, but POA is the, rain, is the main thing that I'm after um, whenever whenever I go with, um, with, with this product. So hopefully that helps. If you already have 
Um, you already have straight product. I mean, just use that, man. Just use that. If you already got it, just use it. I mean, here's what I would do. Do do the um, do the prodiamine, and then just run out and get some image. Like go and get go to Home Depot, get some image because that's like uh, image. I believe is a Mazaquin, um, and just apply that. So do your your pre emergent spray. Like do an image application, and you're kind of creating your own coastal of sorts. Um, so you're kind of getting, you know, you're, you're doing it yourself without having to um, getting it all in one product. I would, I would, if you already have Prodime, in other, in other words, I would not go out and buy um, Coastal. I would just, you know, I, I wouldn't do that. So hopefully um, that helps. And as far as just the crabgrass, it should start dying off soon. I'm not sure if it's, if um, um, Amazequin and um, Simazine are labeled to control Spurge. I don't believe so. I'd have to look at the label to be sure. Because again, what I mainly think about when it comes to those products are like um, cool season grasses that are an annoying that are annoying in warm season lawns. So that's what I'm trying to get rid of. Um, because again, the um, the crab grass is gonna start going away soon here anyways. All right, next up we got uh, Vic Spade in the house. Hey, what's going on, Vic? He says, hey, he says, hey, I'm here for the first time. Thanks for coming to hang out, Vic. I, uh, I appreciate you. Thanks, uh, thanks again. All right, and then um, next you got um, Pirate uh, 2031 that's on with a super chat. Um, no super question, chat. but just showing support. I appreciate you, Pirate, uh, for uh, for that. Thank you. Um, thanks again for that. All right, so next we got Nicholas Dorsey in the house. There's a question I think about overseeding. He says, hey, Ron, do you think it's too early um, or too warm to start a rye overseed for Bermuda in North Georgia. I plan to do a scalp tomorrow. No, it's not too early. If anything, you're you're a little bit behind the curve. I would have started it um, two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. Uh, yeah. So yeah, no, you're not. You're not. It's not too warm at all to do it because um, you're in North Georgia. You're in the same area as I am. Um, if I were going to overseed my lawn with rye grass, which I'm not, I'm not saying I'm going to do that. But if I were, I would have already done it a couple of weeks ago. But I'm not doing that. I'm not saying that I'm doing that. So, uh, so yeah. If you if you're doing a scalp tomorrow, get your scalp done, get all the trash out of there, and then if you want to go through and put down some um, so your your uh, your rye overseed, then I uh, should be good to go. Go for it, man. All right. So pirates in the house. Okay. So with the question, he says, "We love you, Ron. I appreciate it." He says, "What's the best thing for grubs in North Carolina right now?" Um, really, you really want you really wanted to have started controlling grubs earlier in the season if you could. Um, I would still go with something like a Celeprin um, pirate, but really, if you the, the the best way to control grubs is to prevent them from being a problem in the first place. So I, I am more of a fan of getting my insecticide um, applications done earlier in the year, like April Aprilish time frame. Like that's a, that's a better time to use. Uh, and you say I saw one yesterday. And I'm a bit worried. I have been using the Miramichi Green, but not sure if I should use something else. So the, yeah, so the Miramichi Green Pest Control. Um, I don't believe that's labeled for grubs. Um, for grubs, you're gonna wanna use something like a celeprin. If you wanna give that a go, that is what I would go with. Let me see if I can find a link for you here. Actually, I've got it right here. Um, a celeprin is a really, 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 really good um, insecticide. Like I did it I did it earlier this year and it's um, it's been awesome. Like this year, my lawn to get eaten up with, um, with grubs or army worms. Um, and again, going next year, if we were talking about formulating a plan on Pirate, um, Pirate 2031 is uh, this product that I'm putting here in the chat. Let me see. At Pirate uh, is you, you can do it now if you'd like to try if just as a preventative to try and kill you know you, you try and control the grubs you have in your lawn now. But you definitely want to apply this next year in the spring. So like March April, that's a great time to get it down. Um, and that a good application of a celeprin will carry you throughout the growing season. So hopefully that helps. Um, it's smart because you're trying to get it, get rid, get a, get ahead of it, but you're going to need something other than the Miramichi Green Pest Control for grubs. It will work for army worms, but um, but not for grubs. All right. Uh, next up, we got Mr. Rob Shot in the house. He says, "Hey, Ron, I've been MIA. Just had a newborn. That's that's a good reason, man. We'll, we'll let you slide for that. We'll let you slide for that." He says, uh, "Do you think it's too late to top dress uh, in Panama City, Florida, uh, Empire Zoysia? I have many low areas between." When the sod was installed, I wouldn't, man. It's too. It's for even with you being, I mean, Panama City. That's still that's North Florida. It's still gonna get. It's still gonna get cool there here pretty soon if it isn't already. I wouldn't. I personally wouldn't. I would wait till next year. I think. I think it's a little bit too cool. Um, it's too late in the season to do that, and especially with you having zoysia. You know, zoysia is a is a, is a slow growing grass type anyway. Um, that I wouldn't do it. I would just wait till next year, man. It's a ton of work, so why not just wait till the, you're doing it during the times when it's um, when it's optimal, like late um, late April, early May. That's the time to uh, to top dress. I, I would wait till then. 
that is what I would do. And congrats on the newborn. Hopefully mom and baby are doing well. So, uh, so yeah, pretty awesome. And then Demir says, absolutely, man, that would be a lot of fun. So see, I got you. I got, I'm, I got, we're committed to it now. So yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to uh, mess, message you on Instagram. We'll have to set something up, um, get together ahead of time and test like your camera and video and audio and all this stuff, make sure everything is working good. And then we can uh, get together and, and chat for a bit. Now, here's the thing, man. You know, we go kind of long, but just let me know if there's any restrictions as far as like how long you want to be on and we can, uh, we can make it work. It'll be, I think it'll be cool. And you got to make sure you like send some pictures so we can show, you can show people all the gear you're working with. I got some that you sent me, but um, we got to show off all the hardware that you guys use on the, uh, on the golf course. Cool stuff. All right. Uh, Jordan Rockwell says, for a Bermuda in Alabama, would you recommend anything other than Spectricide for Doveweed? Does pre-emergent help stop it? Um, so um, that, that combination, if, if, if I'm not using Spectricide, I would use um, Celsius. That's what I would go with uh, Jordan. Uh, and as far as pre-emergent, does it stop it from growing? It, it, it will, it can help reduce the amount that germinates um, going forward, but if it's already here, it's not gonna kill it. In other words, if you already have um, doveweed in your lawn, pre-emergent isn't gonna do anything for the existing doveweed. You're gonna need something like Celsius or Spectricide um, to do it. Uh, so hopefully, uh, hopefully that, that does the trick that helps. Um, but yeah, but the thing is, um, here's the thing, Jordan, I mean, don't, don't, you know, discount Spectricide too much. Again, it's, you know, if you want to get Celsius, it's great. I mean, I can, I'll send you, I'll give you a link to it. Um, but you know, remember that Celsius is, I can't even do the math. Like how many times is like Celsius is like $120, $110, $120 for a bottle of it, right? Spectricide is like 15 bucks. So you can do a lot of Spectricide apps um, to control the dove weed, uh, you know, instead of going with Celsius. But it all depends. If you already have a backpack sprayer, you already got everything you need to be able to apply it safely, um, then, then yeah, Celsius is a good option. And if you decide you want to go with that, I'll send you a link. But I mean, again, I would not, um, I won't be so kicked to, 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 to throw old Spectricide to the, uh, to the curb. Just because it's basic doesn't mean that it's not, um, can't be effective if you're willing to do a few apps. All right, so let me send that to, um, to Jordan, Jordan Rockwell. There you go. So hopefully that helps. All right. Um, and then Mauricio Salinas is chiming in. He's saying, yep, you could use a Celeprin G, which works well to prevent white grubs or Caravan G, which is a two-in-one product, fungicide and insecticide. That's a good option too. That's actually a good point um, on Mauricio. This late in the season, if you actually want to put down a preventative fungicide, Caravan G might actually be um, a good option. That's a good, that's a good point. That's a good point. So, um, so yeah, Caravan G or a Celeprin, um, either one of those will, will work. And I will, uh, you got a link for that there if you are, if you are so inclined. All right. Uh, Mark Houston says, thank you. I have zoysia. The pH is six. pH, I mean, the pH of six isn't bad, Mark. I mean, um, you know, if you want to just do a lime app, um, like a light lime app, 20 pounds per thousand, um, you know, a light one, that, that's going to be fine. Even in that, in that case, even like, um, I'm not sure if you're the person that asked about the, um, the green, the, uh, the, I'm drawing a blank here. I don't want, want my brain shut off. The, um, the, the pH adjustment, the Jonathan Green product the, the, for, for adjusting your, 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 your pH. Um, at, at six, you're, you're at the low end of the Goldilocks zone. So if you want to do like a light lime app, um, that would, that's fine. Um, but yeah, you're not, you're not in an area where, um, where I'd say you need to go crazy heavy, like doing like 40 pounds per thousand, 10 to 20 pounds, um, of, of a light app should be, should be just fine. Great, great question. And good on you for getting a soil test done, man. Always good stuff. Glad to hear it. All right. So Will Dog Hale State says, good evening, Ron. Did you have any nuts edge return after your certainty Celsius treatment? I used self, uh, sulfentrazone um, with a follow-up earlier in the year and some nuts edge came back. I have not had any. And I, you know what? I'm actually, tomorrow I will do that. Tomorrow morning, uh, before I go to pretest, I will uh, do a YouTube story and show you guys what that patch looks like because I've been, I have purposely not mowed over it it is like dead. I mean, it's like D-E-D -E -D dead, like dead, dead. Like the, uh, the nut, nuts edge patch is not coming back. Um, and uh, so, um, so certainty Celsius, it's a, it's a great combo for, for nuking um, sedges. And the same thing, even in the vanity strip area, I'll show you guys that tomorrow as well too. Like the vanity strip where there are a lot of rain, uh, not the vanity strip, the, the swale area between Alex and myself where water tends to run after water, after rains. Um, that area as well, no issues with... Um, no issues with nuts edge or anything like that. I'll keep you posted. If it pops back up, I'll let you let you know. But it's very effective for killing it. Uh, very effective for killing it. 
Um, and let's see what else uh, we have here. Um, I'm not sure what your question is, Am Nightman, um, A.M. Nightman. Um, um, but stuff on the screen is people's comments and then other, other uh, links and URLs that are associated with it. Um, okay, let's see what else we have here. All right, uh, next question we have is from Chris Hain. Says, uh, thoughts on iron apps as we lose Bermuda color. I notice uh, ironite granular used, uh, used to be um, one pound per thousand square feet, but now um, the bag label is like a third pound rate. Is that uh, just marketing BS? Here's the thing, Chris, I've never actually applied ironite to my lawn. Every time I've, um, every time I've done iron in my lawn, it's always been, uh, if I've applied iron in my lawn, it's always been along with some other products. So when I was doing like Melorganite, like Melorganite has it. When I was using Carbon Pro L, that had a little bit of iron in it. Um, uh, Turfplex has iron in it. You know what I mean? So hopefully, um, hopefully that helps. Um, and let me see, so that's one person asking, saying, why am I saying um so much? Um, it's a word whisper, it's a word whisker. Um, uh, said it there, AM Nightman. Here's the thing to realize, right? Like I am like moderating, doing some moderation, answering questions, like managing super chats, and it's a lot of stuff going on. So sorry that it makes you um, irritated. If you don't like it, there's tons of other live streams you can go watch. I promise I won't be mad if you leave. But uh, I'm, I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best, sir. Sorry, sorry that it that it irritates you uh, so much. Um, I'm sorry that it does. Um. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, we have Austin Baird in the house. He says, "Hey, Ron, how long after overseeding can I use post emergent on tall fescue? I'll be using blindside. Check the label. I, I would want the grass to be established, Austin. So four weeks, four to six weeks. So like after the lawn is established well, you've mowed it a few times." that's when you can bring in the post-emergent herbicides. I would not do any uh, pre-emergent on it. Like let's not do any pre-emergent, but as far as post-emergent, just give it, for, give it a good month. Let sure it's, it's rooted in properly, it's growing in nicely, and you should be, uh, should be good to go. Hopefully uh, that helps. And congrats on the new tall fescue lawn. All right, uh, Demetrius uh, Met Metsopoulos, Says, hey Ron, what's a good NPK post core aeration? The best answer to that question is what your soil test tells you, right? So if you already know what your soil is lacking as far as nutrient, um, your soil test will tell you exactly what you should be applying. If you just want a generic product to apply or that to, you know, after aeration, that's gonna be, that has a bit of everything in it, a good balanced product, then something like the, uh, the Yard Mastery Triple 12, something like this, let me bring it up here. This guy right here. That is a good option to apply. So it's, it's, it's a balanced fertilizer, not too much nitrogen, not too much potassium, not too much phosphorus. It also has a micronutrient stack in it as well. So uh, this is a good option. You know, if you're looking for something that you want to, that you want to put on your lawn outside of doing a soil test and, and applying like exactly what your soil needs, like the, based on that, that's a good option to go with uh, in your lawn. So hopefully uh, that helps, uh, Demetrius. Great, great question. All right, A9 uh, Modi is in the house. These Q&As are so good. Keep up the great work, Ron, and everyone who joins today. You are so awesome. I appreciate it, man. Thanks so much. I appreciate you uh, hanging out in the live stream and asking questions. It's a lot of work, and uh, I'm glad that you guys that you guys appreciate it. It's fun hanging out with you guys, just chopping it up about lawn care, right? Okay, Seba Brown. That's uh, Seba Brown. That's an interesting. I've never met. I've never met. Uh, is it Seba or I think I say Seba because there's an island right next to the island I grew up on called Seba, but I think it's Seba. It says uh, I have an area in my backyard that originally was Bermuda sod, but as the trees matured around it, the sod failed now, and it's uh, mostly weeds. Uh, what would be a good option for replacement? I live in Georgia, so you have Bermuda sod, and as trees matured, it yeah it died. Uh, what would be a good replacement? So here's the thing, if you're going to use, if the trees are gonna be around, I would not do Bermuda. Something like a fescue or cool, some type of cool season grass, more than likely like fescue, is, is what you're gonna wanna use if you want uh, to grow grass in a shaded area. Zoysia is an option too, but it depends on how much shade we're talking about here. Even zoysia needs sunlight to do well. Um, uh, Seba or Seba, again, apologize if, you're, if I'm messing your name up. Um, so zoysia is an option if you want to stick with, with warm season grass, but as, as far as something that is going to be more than likely is going to do well under trees, a cool season grass type like fescue 
uh, is something that I would go with. So hopefully uh, that helps. Hopefully that helps. All right. Uh, great, great question. And you live in Georgia, so you are in my neck of the woods, man. And then Chris Hain has a question about the Yard Mastery Sprayer. He says, how's the Yard Mastery Backpack Sprayer holding up? Still recommended versus alternatives? I mean, I've only been using it a couple of times, so it's been holding up pretty well, uh, uh, Chris. Like you guys saw me um, use it in that video. That's that's like the, um, outside of all the testing that I did, um, it's had about six weeks worth of use. I forget whenever I when I whenever I got it in this place. I've had I've had it for a few months, but then I started testing it and um, beating on it, just seeing make sure that it works well. Battery life was good. Sat there and like ran several backpacks of water through it just to see how you know how if the if the uh, if it, it would begin dropping off as far as like flow rate and all that stuff. Yeah, I'd recommend it, man. I mean, here's the thing: a, a lot of the sprayers you should realize, like most of the sprayers, like the Flow Zone. The like the spray made sprayers, the yard master sprayers. Like there's only a, there's only a couple of companies that really make the DI, like sprayers that we use in DIY. The things that you can change in them, you can you can change like what um, pump that you decide you want to use with it. That's that's probably the biggest difference. You can also change or spec different attachments and also things like straps and that kind of thing, right? So yeah, I'd, I'd recommend the yard mastery sprayer because mainly because the flow rate from a standpoint of how much product it can put out quickly. It, it can flow more than the flow zone does. And the biggest thing is that it costs less than the flow zone in most places. Again, you can find the flow zone on sale sometimes, but in most cases, the flow zone is around $320 or more if you can find it in stock anywhere, right? The Yard Mastery Sprayer is like $295. It flows more than the flow zone does. And it has, it comes with like the T-Jet tips. So you're saving, it comes with T-Jet tips and it also comes with the quick, the quick, uh, the QD attachment, right? So that's like 30, 30 to forty dollars there, depending on where you buy the buy the stuff. Um, so it's cheaper from that standpoint, and it's um, you know it's it's a great sprayer. If you have a flow zone, I would not sell the flow zone and go get a yard mastery sprayer. But if you are in the market for a premium sprayer, something in that price range, like that three hundred dollar price range, then yeah, I would go with the yard mastery over the flow zone mainly because it's like you buy it and you're done. You got everything you need to um, got everything you need to be able to rock out, man. To do pre-emergent, to do foliar apps, you're good to go. Good to go. All right, so uh, Robert Rainey uh, has a question. He says, uh, so correct me on what you plan to do for spring patch. Okay, so for spring dead spot, uh, what I plan to do is like my last fertilizer app this weekend. So do a soil test, get my uh, my fertilizer app done um, after I get, get my soil sample. Um, and then I'm gonna do a fungicide. I'm gonna do two fungicide apps. I'm gonna do one now. And then at the beginning of November, I will do another fungicide app. And then just we'll see where things work out. We'll see if when springtime rolls around, if that was enough, one by like limiting how much nitrogen I put in the lawn, and then also by putting like a preventative fungicide down, seeing if that helps with preventing spring dead spot. So we'll see. We'll see how it uh, how it works out, uh, Robert. That is that is what I am uh, going with. Okay, uh, Todd's real lawn. It's an awesome, awesome name. Uh, Todd's Real Lawn says, hey Ron, great show again. What's going on, Todd? He says, I did a little experiment this year. I bought an aerator. Okay, that's pretty awesome. That's a pretty, that's a pretty big step. And he says, I aerated uh, three times this fall and the lawn looks great. Do you think you could ever aerate too much? Uh, could you aerate too much? You could do anything too much. Um, I mean, if you aerate before the lawn has a chance to recover, it's just gonna, the lawn's just gonna look ugly all the time. So I don't know that you're necessarily gonna hurt anything per se, but the lawn's just not gonna look look good. So I I'm inclined to say yes, you can do anything too much. But if you're doing it, if you if you own an aerator and you're doing it, you know, several times uh, throughout the growing season, like you're doing it three times, um, that's probably gonna be just fine. Like most people don't aerate that much because most people like me, like I go and I rent one. I don't actually own an aerator. If I owned one, I would probably do it more often, but I don't I don't own one, so that's that's the reason why. So yeah, I don't think there's any any issues with um with doing it. Big thing is I would just spread it out so the, the lawn has a chance to recover and it looks nice. You can actually enjoy how nice the lawn looks between aeration events, but yeah, you should be fine. Should be good to go. All right, uh, yes, Patrick says, um, suggestion on calibrating my new sprayer. I'm in the Lawn, lawn um, the Lawn Academy. You probably have something in there. I do, Patrick, so I have it there in the core, in the, the, the module on um, backpack sprayers. There's like a lesson on backpack sprayers. I think it's like tip five. There's like a section in there where I talk about uh, sprayer calibration, but I've also got a video where I do that as well too that I release for everybody that shows the same math that is in the course. If you wanna see like a little bit longer video, something a little bit more drawn out, 
then you can also check out this video as well. You're already in the academy, so you just go look at that. But if you also want like a second take on it as well, you can take a look at uh, this one. So this shows the same the same process for calibration. And you wanna do that based on the tip, right? So depending on which tip you have, then you'll calibrate based on that. So based on the, what you have the spreader set, the, the sprayer set to, and the tip you happen to be using. Because not only does the sprayer um, run at different pressures, but also tips flow differently depending on which one you're going with. That makes sense. So like a good example, like the flood jet tip does not flow at the same, puts, does not put out product at the same rate as like the foliar tip, um, all everything else being equal, like pressures being the same, if that makes sense. So you wanna do a calibration with each tip, if that makes sense. So hopefully that helps, sir. And if you need anything else, let me know, or just, um, you know, or ping me in the uh, in the, the private Facebook group and we can we can dig into it some more. If you, if you, if the, what's in the academy isn't clear or that video also isn't clear, you have other questions, hit me up and I'll help you out with doing the math or just, you know, or, or we can just we can just chat about it. No problems at all. All right, Miss Kellen, Miss Kellen is in the house. She says, hey, Ron, Miss Kellen here. Hope you're doing great. I am doing well. Thanks for asking. She says, uh, so here's the deal. I have located, I have two localized dry spots. I have added hydrochain, Humic 12 and some sea kelp to this hot mess. Any suggestions to help? Not really. I mean, you know, water the area. You know, if you can, if you have irrigation, uh, you might want to do some spot watering of those localized dry spots a bit more, uh, in addition to everything else you're doing. But I mean, I, you know, you've done, you've done everything that um, that I would recommend and more. Like I would have just done hydrotain, but you did some Humic 12. You did some sea kelp. Uh, the only thing I didn't hear you mention is giving those areas a little bit more water. Now I'm not saying like drown them, don't like you know, turn them into like a swamp, but giving them a little bit of more spot watering than the rest salon. That's the only other thing I might do, and just just give it time and see how the localized dry spots respond to everything that you've been putting down. Great question, and uh, thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. All right, uh, next up, uh, we got uh, Dwayne uh, Hopkins in the house. It says, uh, super chat it says, thanks, Ron, for all you do Friday. That's, I'm going to do that for the, for the person that sent me a super chat uh, that's, you know, that's just trying to be malicious. So, hey, Ron, thanks for all you do Friday. Keep up all the great work. Everyone, make sure to hit that like button ever so gently. Thanks so much, Dwayne. I need a sip of my lemonade. And we are over the nine o'clock hour. So it is time for me to, to beg and plead that those of you that are new to the channel or just join the live stream, if you guys wouldn't mind just reaching over and touching that like button ever so gently, it's free for you guys to do. It's a great way to support the channel. It gives me a chance to take a sip of my, uh, my lemonade. I'd really appreciate it. All right. And then Kellen has a follow-up saying, I'm in Central Texas, and it's in uh, the mid '80s and '90s, feeling like there's some deficiencies. Uh, yeah, I mean, you did everything that is reasonable, Kellen. Just give it time at this point. Give it time. You know what I mean? I would not. Um, I wouldn't do anything else. And uh, for the person that's sending me the super chat, it's it's super awesome that you guys are um, are super actually paying money received. just to post comments that actually will never actually see the light of day. It's pretty cool. I appreciate it. Thanks for the support. All right. Uh, Next up, we have um, Mazama is chiming in saying the white uh, turf leaves might be powdery mildew. See if it wipes off. Thanks for that, Mazama. When he said uh, tenacity, I thought it was um, like, you know, the, the leaves turning like turning, you know, how tenacity turns uh, weeds white, like they, they lose their color. Like they, uh, that's what I thought he was talking about. But you're right. He might have been referring to powdery, um, powdery mildew. All right, Alexander uh, Thomas is chiming in about Spectacle Flow. He loves some Spectacle Flow. He says, Spec Flow will last a long time. 18 ounces goes a long way. I only use 1.5 ounces in the fall on 8,000 square feet of Bermuda. Switch to per per Prodiamine for the spring. Spec Flow really ain't that expensive. You know, and you're right. I mean, given, you know, you're right. Given how long it lasts, um, it really isn't, isn't that expensive. But for most people, I mean, for you, Alex, Alex, you've already done the math on it and you realize that it's a, one, it's a, an excellent um, pre-emergent. But for most people, if you tell them that are getting into lawn care, getting into working on their home lawns, you know, if I tell them like, hey, you gotta go get buy a backpack sprayer, and then you have to go buy like an almost $300 bottle of pre-emergent, uh, you know, it's gonna turn a lot of people off. Even though Spectral Flow is an excellent option, you know, I guess some of the studies that I've been looking at show that Coastal, again, at least against, against um, POA, can produce similar results at, uh, at half the price, almost a third of the price. So that's the reason, that's what I'm going with there. But I agree with you, man. Uh, Spectacle Flow is like the gold standard as far as pre-emergent for, um, for warm season grass. So thanks for chiming in. I do appreciate it. 
I do appreciate it. Okay, Mark has a follow-up question, I think. He says, hey, Ron, looking to renovate an area next spring that is mostly weeds. What should I do going into winter uh, now and going into the spring to lessen the weed competition, East North Carolina, renovating to Zoysia? So yeah, if you if you have a lot of weeds now in that area, if you want to get a a, um, a post-emergent herbicide now to uh, to kill them off or to be knocking them back and then follow that up with a pre-emergent app in that area, that would be a, a good option. I'm assuming that whenever you put the zoysia in in the spring, you're going to be using sod. If not, you should. You should just sod it. It's going to be a lot easier. Uh, yeah, so that's what I would do. I would try and eliminate the weeds as much as I can now, the one, the existing ones, and then use a pre-emergent to reduce weed pressure in the spring so that whenever you decide you're going to put your, your zoysia sod in that, in that section of the lawn, you're not going to have a bunch of weeds to contend with. So that is what I would do. Great question. Uh, David Lee has a question about chamber bitter. He says, chamber bitter is taking over a section of my lawn. Any recommendations on how to get rid of this weed? Respect. I think I think spectricide is labeled for chamber bitter, and I I'm not sure on Celsius. Um, David, Celsius might be as well. Give me a second here to actually look. I'll look here on the label, and uh, give me just to, just to pull it up here, and I will look and I will give you an answer super quick. Whether whether they are, I mean, I'm fairly certain that um, that spectricide will work, but if you want a heavier hitting option, yeah, so it is labeled for chamber bitter as well. So you got two options, I'm gonna give you two. I'm gonna give you the less expensive option, and then I'm gonna give you the more expensive option. So um, the first one is gonna be uh, spectricide, which is this guy here. Let's switch over, boom. So this guy you can get at your local Home Depot, your Lowe's, your Wally World. Uh, it's going to cost you about $15 for this bottle that you see here, and it is labeled to uh, to control, to kill chamber bitter. Uh, this won't work. It may take more than one app to, to kill it, though. Uh, it's... Sir, uh, Celsius is more of a heavy hitting herbicide. You're talking about like a like you know big boy professional grade um, herbicides, but you're talking about a lot of the, a lot more expensive. So whereas this is fifteen dollars, and you know it's I guess here's the thing: per, by volume, by volume, let me get myself back on the screen here. By volume, Celsius is actually cheaper. It's act, you get more for your money with Celsius. But if all you're trying to do is control like just a little bit of chamber bitter and you don't have like a big weed problem you're trying to take care of in your entire lawn, then give spectricide a shot first, you know, get rid of it and then start using pre-emergent to, to control or prevent from being a problem in the first place. Celsius is a great option. It's an, again, it's a great herbicide, but you'll probably buy one bottle of it and it's going to last you for the next five to 10 years, right? So it just depends on which one you feel more comfortable with. If you feel comfortable like mixing up products um, and applying them in a backpack sprayer, and making sure you're putting on the right PPE and all that kind of thing, then Celsius is is a is going to be better than Spectricide, um, but it's it's also just a lot more expensive, right? So it just depends on where you are and which one you want to go with, which one works better for you. If you decide to go with Celsius at David, I'm going to put a link um, here in the uh, in the chat for you at David Lee. And then as far as if you want to see a video of how to mix that, now in the video that I'm going to link here, David, I'm also going to have. Um, it's, you're also going to see me mixing uh, uh, certainty along with it. You don't have to add certainty with this with this blend if you're all you're trying to do is control chamber bitter. If all you want is that, then just use uh, Celsius. But I'll put a link here in the chat so you can see how to also um, some options for mixing it and applying it and all that good stuff. So hopefully that helps. I appreciate it and respect, sir. Thanks for coming into the live stream and, and for asking uh, the questions. Um, uh, yeah, Dalvin's like, what a jerk pie flush. Yeah. Um, I mean, Dalvin, here's the thing, man, you know, just cross 30,000 subscribers. Remember, this is the live stream, like prior to 29,000, this is the first live stream at 30K. So you have to understand how the way haters work, right? Like they, they kind of, they kind of charge up and then they decompress. And then seeing, you know, I guess seeing the channel cross 30,000 all and totally due to you guys, like just supporting the channel, they just can't stand it. Right. So they're even paying money just to be hateful. Right. Terrible, terrible. I still love you guys though. I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate the thumbs up and thumbs down and all the engagement. Love you guys anyway. Thanks for coming to hang out. All right, CR saying, at Dalvin Larry, my thoughts too. Ron, thanks for all you do. I do appreciate all the love and support. And then uh, Moro, um, we got a super chat from Lance F. Sorry, Lance. Super Get that. Chat for he says, thank, thank you. We look forward to your, uh, to your Friday night. And then uh, Mauricio Salinas is also chiming in on Celsius saying, I believe Celsius helps to kill it. I have Bermuda too. In Florida, I have used a similar product called Blindside and it helped me with most weeds in my area. Blindside is an excellent product too. Uh, 
you know, when I talk to a lot of my buddies that that spray lawns uh, for a living, that they have, have a spray business, they they also say, yeah, Celsius is really good. Blindside is uh, is awesome because it works on both cool season and warm season grass. The only negative to Blindside is a lot of states where it's not. I don't I don't know why they didn't go through the trouble of getting it labeled in like at least the states where like where warm season grass is, right? Um, but it's not labeled in a lot of states. Like I can actually show you guys. I'm, I can show you real quick. Like Celsius, you can well, we can be shipped pretty much um, to a lot of places. Blindside, even though it's an excellent post-emergent, um, is not labeled for um, a lot of locations. So if you look here, if I can find it real quick. Yeah, so if you look at um, Blindside, you look at the places where it's not available to, it says here, yeah, not available to Arkansas, Arizona, California, like a, there's a bunch of states where you where you can't you can't buy it, right? So that's uh, that's the only challenge with uh, with that one. But it's a good, it's a really good um, post-emergent herbicide. People get really good results with it, and unlike Celsius, that one you can use on some cool season turf types as well. So, but thanks for chiming in, Mauricio. I appreciate you. And then we got another uh, super chat here from CR. Super chat received. He says, thank you, sir. You're doing a great job. I appreciate it, CR. Thanks for coming to hang in. And Austin is in with an update, guys. You know, Austin comes in every now and then, every couple of weeks and gives us an update on his uh, Scott seed versus other types of seeds. I think it's Scott's versus Baron Brug. So he says, quick update on the Scott's versus Baron Brug tall fescue. He says, wow, Baron Brug. Uh, the Scott's is coming in decently but the Berenbrug RTF is amazingly thick and germinated in half the time as a Scots, more later. Thanks for the update, um, Austin. So I feel good about recommending Berenbrug to people that ask for a quality uh, cool season grass seed. Because again, I don't have cool season grass, but every, I mean, most people that I know that I talk to and you hear about Berenbrug, they have good things to say about it. So I'm glad that you have done the seeding test on your lawn. You've done the research for us and that in your mind, Berenbrug comes out on top. Appreciate that. Okay, Kathleen Gamble, this is, a good, this is a good question, Kathleen. It says, do you water your grass first uh, or fertilize then water? Great question, Kathleen. Uh, so you should fertilize first, um, and then if the fertilizer you're using needs to be watered in, then you would water afterwards. So a good example, right? If you're using something like this, like Turfplex, you know what, I need to like use this bottle up. There's no reason for me to have like a heavy, a full bottle of Turfplex on there. Cause like every time I'm straining to move this thing around, it's, it's ridiculous. But anyway, if you're using um, something like this, like Turfplex, like this uh, specifically does not need to be watered in. It's a liquid fertilizer. So you would spray this and then you don't need to water it in. You're good to go. Like you spray it and you're done. If you're using something that is a granular, like, like something from Scott's or something from Yard Mastery or if you really want something really nice, you go with something like the Humic Max, something like this, like a granular, like this, you need to water it afterwards. So if you're using granular fertilizer, most, pretty much all granular ferts, after you apply them, you're gonna wanna water in, water them in after application. Liquids, depending on which one, some liquids um, call for being watered in, some do not. Uh, Turfplex does not. So the, the answer to your question is, uh, for, if you're doing talking about a granular, so something like this, like the, the bead type, you're gonna fertilize and then water. Hope that helps. Great question. That's a good one. That's a good one. A lot of people will say, "Oh, it's a really, that's a really, um, that's a basic question." But it's a really, that's a smart question. It's a smart question to ask. Really good question. Thanks for coming to coming to hang out in the live stream, and I appreciate, uh, I appreciate it. All right, uh, David Mayette says, um, "Ron, what's your tech setup? Camera, lights, mics. What are you using for overlays? OBS." Um, okay, so I I am a Apple fanboy, Apple geek, right? So it's um, Macs. I don't actually I don't actually own a Windows computer. Like the only thing I use Windows for is whenever I'm like um, like detonating malware in VMs. Like I run Windows in virtual machines, but like not on any actual hardware. Uh, but everything is Macs. So I use um, Ecamm Live. That's what you're seeing me use. That's what that's what allows me to put you up on the screen. How did I lose you in here already? It allows me to take you up, take you up and put you on the screen. So I'm not using really any overlay, overlays per se. I'm using Ecamm, it's doing all that. Uh, and then as far as lights, I've got like a, you can't see it, but I've got a really big um, dome light here. If you guys wanna see what I look like without it, so I turn the light off, see if I do this. That's what things look like without the light on. And that's what things look like with the light on. So lighting is really huge because otherwise this entire room is dark. So that's the, that's the main light. And then I've got a couple of like accent lights in the back. Um, just to add a little bit of depth, that makes things look, things look better. If I turn those off, so you guys can see, so you can appreciate all the trouble I go through. So things look okay now, right? But if we turn the lights off, turn those off, you can see it looks okay. 
but not as good, right? Like it looks like a lot of, like I kind of blend into the background, like there's not much separation. So that's why having the lights in the background kind of helps with that. And it also helps the things that are on there show up a bit more. Um, and then as far as microphone, audio setup, all that stuff, it's, um, I'll just say it's expensive. It's, just, it's just expensive. We'll just say that. Uh, the, the mic that I'm using is from Sheps. So if you're like a an audio person, you know about Sheps microphones. Um, it's a very, very good microphone. Um, the best thing I can say about this mic is that it sounds like there is no mic. Like how you guys hear me, this is how I sound in real life. So I'm using that and that is going into a, um, a sound devices, uh, audio recorder slash mixer, like one of their eight series devices uh, that has um, a bit of EQ and a bit of compression. So if I talk really loud, it doesn't get super loud for you guys. Um, and then, yeah, the rest of it just kind of feeds into my, my setup. It's like, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's completely overkill for live streams, but there's never, a, there's no harm, no shame in doing a thing well, right? Plus whenever I'm on like, um, like calls for work and that kind of thing, it's a nice setup to be able to use that with. So yeah, and as far as camera, it's like a Sony cameras and everything else. So it's a, it's a lot, completely overkill, but it makes pretty pictures and it sounds good. So that's why I do it and it's fun. All right, great question, um, Dave, hopefully that helps. Next up, we got a rod here. Uh, is from Dal from Dallas Fort Worth. He says DFW area with Saint Augustine um, in the sun eight hours. Besides water, what can I do to keep to keep it looking green? Um, sunlight is the big thing. So if you're getting sunlight um, and you're watering it and you're keep and you're fertilizing it, so you're, you're putting the right kind of fertilizer on it. Uh, the next thing is just mowing, right? So so keep keep up with your mowing. If you're mowing only you know, once a week, once every two weeks, that's not really enough if you're really serious about getting your, keeping your lawn looking as good as possible. Twice per week is where you wanna be, but also keep in mind, um, um, A-Rod, that, you know, St. Augustine is a warm season grass, so it's going to start, you know, it's, it's gonna start falling off a bit. Like the color is not gonna look as nice now this time of year than it did like late spring and into the summer. So, you know, that's something to keep in mind as far as expectations you have to have for a warm season grass when it comes to fall months. But uh, outside of sun, which is a big thing, you got that done. If you wanna pick up your mowing frequency a little bit and then also um, add a quality fertilizer. Uh, you know, if you're looking for a great fert, um, I, I'm a big fan of the fertilizers from Lebanon Turf. Like they were, they were so gracious enough this year. Um, after many, lots of begging and pleading in the off season, they, they agreed to allow us to sell Humic Max, which is like a, um, it's in their country club line of, line of fertilizers. This is um, a 1608, excellent product, also contains almost 9% humic acid. So excellent product if you're looking for a quality fert, uh, but outside of a good fertilizer, um, adequate water, and uh, the next thing is just mowing, man. It's the thing that's actually free to do other than your time. Just mow a lot. Just mow and mow and mow some more. When you think you've mowed enough, mow one more time. That's, that's gonna give you the best bet for keeping the lawn green as, po as much as possible as it begins to fall off later on in, in, the, uh, in the season in the fall. Because you're in Austin too. Austin's a little bit up there, so it's gonna start falling off here fairly soon. Okay, uh, Clayton, okay, he's giving me a tough question here. Let's see here. I says, Ron, I'm thinking about making major chemical purchases for lawn treatment, uh, something that would last a few seasons. If you had $500, what would you purchase? Okay, so when you're talking about uh, a major chemical purchase, are you talking about hardware to apply chemicals or are you talking about uh, like the products themselves? But I, I'll, I'll give you a, a both. If you're talking about uh, like a sprayer, I would recommend, I mean, there's tons of different options depending on your budget, your budget's like 500 bucks. Let me think, if, I, if we use up 300 of that, yeah. Is it, is it, is it about $500 for buying equipment? I would buy a quality sprayer and I would buy a quality um, broadcast sprayer. That's the, that's what I would, how I would use that up. So the sprayer I would use is the one from Yard Mastery. It's a great sprayer. It's, I think it represents great value for money. Plus it's like a one and done. You buy it, it comes with every, literally everything you need uh, other than electricity to charge the battery. Uh, that you need to use it on your lawn. And then as far as the um, broadcast spreader, I like the one from Earthway. Like Earthway makes a really good broadcast spreader. I know some people like other ones, but the Earthway spreader has served me really well. It's a good, it's a good prosumer level broadcast spreader. Um, and the reason why I like it, even though you can use the Scots ones and still get a good result with those, the reason why I like the Earthway is that because it's considered, again, like a prosumer grade, is when you start looking at things like fungus, like again, like the the, the professional grade fungicides, fertilizers, those types of things, um, there will be a rate for Earthway spreaders on the label. Whereas if you have a Scott spreader, they just don't like, uh, like I, I've, I have yet to see a, um, I have yet to see a Syngenta 
label that has a Scots um, setting on it that I can recall. Certainly when it comes to fertilizer, I've not, I've not seen that. So if you're looking for a backpack sprayer, the Yard Mastery one is the one that I would um, that I would go with. If you're talking about liquids, let me see if I can scroll down here and see if that's what you're 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 mentioning. You didn't chime in anymore, but if it's if it's um, yeah, so the Yard Mastery sprayer and a good uh, broadcast spreader. If you're talking about liquids, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish in your lawn. Like five hundred dollars goes a really long way. Like you can do your entire season between uh, like granular furt, pre-emergent. Um, and liquid for for five hundred dollars. Like you could do Turfplex, you could do Humic Max, um, and then you're you know, and, and the, the golf course lawn carbon kit is also an excellent choice. So I can I can just run through them. I'll show you here in the actual on the actual live stream. If you're talking about actual products, like, and I'm I'm answering is this a, as like what I have done and what I do is for a liquid for your liquid fertilizer, I would use uh, Turfplex. This guy here, I would go with this. It's a great one. Uh, one, you know, it's you know, it applies at a very low rate along along with humic max and a spoon feeding program. So this will be your liquid fert. For uh, your your granular, I would go with Country Club the uh, the the humic max sixteen zero eight. So between humic max and the Turflex, now we've got your fertilization covered between those two. Now we can get into things like uh, carbon soil amendments and 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 things along those lines. A really awesome option is the golf course lawn kit. I worked really closely with Miramichi Green to put this product package together where you get the, the NutriKelp, the Release Zero, and the microbial package that's in Biospectrum. Like these three products, if you buy them separately, you cannot get them for this price. So I, I worked with Miramichi Green um, and they agreed to put together this kit, this package to make it available for you guys. You can get it in a, in a package or a sizing that's for a 5,000 square foot lawn or a 10,000 square foot lawn. Um, and what this does is it's going to maximize your nutrient uptake. It's also going to, the 24% kelp is also, uh, again, just really good for improving plant health overall. Like everyone that's used this this year, I've only gotten amazing feedback with it. And then finally, the biospectrum is going to help improve your microbial activity, which if you think about, if you understand the entire cycle of like, whenever you apply fertilizer to your lawn, how the fertilizer actually gets into the plant, like the microbes play a role in that. So increasing that activity using something like biospectrum is only going to help things. So we've covered, uh, we've covered fertilization, we've covered um, soil elements. Um, the next thing I'd say as far as chemicals, if you can get, if you can apply something like a preventative insecticide, something like a, a celeprin, that is gonna do a lot for keeping army worms, keeping grubs out of your lawn. Like you really wanna do that. Uh, you really, really wanna do that. Like I, I would, I would I'd highly recommend you get an insecticide down in, um, in the spring. And I think that I, that gets us pretty close to 500 bucks, doesn't it? I mean, between all those things, that gets us, I think that's like, that's less, well under $500. So I've, I've spent some of your money with some change left over. Uh, if you want like uh, like a pest control product, the Miramichi Green Pest Control is a good product too. Uh, that's that's good because it's non-toxic. But I mean, I think, you know, this, I've covered, I've, I've given you a couple of things to think about, both from a um, hardware option. So like a sprayer and a broadcast spreader, you know what I like and what I use. And then from a chemicals, um, lawn care products like liquids, granulars, that kind of thing, I've given you some options there too. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully that was the question you were asking. Uh, if not, I just went on a really long uh, tirade and you know didn't answer your question, but hopefully I did. All right, Demir says, got to head out early tonight for the final round of our last big tournament tomorrow morning. That's awesome, man. Congrats, hopefully the tournament's going well. I'll have some sweet pictures of the course on Instagram tomorrow. Catch y'all next Friday. Thanks so much, Demir. And I will be in touch with you about scheduling a time to get you on the live stream for us to chat about, uh, you know, about golf course, your golf course, like we have to hear about your, your tournament, like everything that went into that. I think the viewers would like to hear it. It'd be kind of cool. So we'll definitely do that. All right, R. Robertson says, what's the latest um, you can put sod down? Uh, so here's the thing. I've seen sod applied year round. Like the sod on my lawn was applied really at a time that if I were paying for it with my money, I probably wouldn't have done it. Uh, but it worked out just fine. So the sod on my lawn was applied in December, and whenever they're building houses around here, they apply sod. Like whenever the house, whenever the house is done, the construction is done, it's time for the sod to go in. The sod goes in regardless of what time of year it is. So if it's Bermuda, pretty much any time of year you can do it, and it's it's going to be all right. But if you're if you are you want the optimal time, I would do it in the spring. So. Uh, like at the start of the growing season, like uh, March, April, when you've got plenty of time, plenty of heat, plenty of you know, plenty of sunlight to help the the grass root in really nicely. Uh, that is the optimal time if you're paying for it yourself, and if you just you don't like you're not in any rush, like you don't want to do it right now. 
Uh, I would wait till the spring if you're dealing with a warm season with a warm season lawn. So I'd answer cool season grass the same way. Uh, I would wait for the op, the beginning of the growing season for that grass type. So for warm, cool season grass, like September, like last month would have been a good time to uh, to do that. So hopefully that helps our, our Robinson. If it's Bermuda, if you, you can put it down pretty much any time of year and it's probably gonna be just fine. But again, if you're paying for it, I would wait till the spring because that's gonna give you the, the absolute best chance for success. But I've seen it done year round, all around here, and all these lawns have green grass, so. Hopefully that helps. Okay, next up we got um, Hit Matumbo. Hit Matumbo says, uh, good evening, Ron. Good evening. Says, thanks again for the contents. Learning so much here. To up my game with consistency on granular applications. Any spreader you'd recommend? Um, I like I like the, uh, the Earthway. I like the Earthway. And actually, you know what you say that there's a question I think I missed someone asked me about spreaders. And I'll answer it now because I think this person asked me earlier in the, and I, I didn't go back to it. Okay, so I would go with the uh, the Earthway, the Earthway 2050. That's uh, my sprayer, uh, my spreader of choice. Or some people that like the um, who makes another one? Echo makes a decent one. Lesco makes a good one. Uh, Spiker, I uh, Spiker Spider makes a good one. Um, but I will show you here the Earthway 2050. That uh, 2050p. That is my jam. That is the one that I like to run. It's not crazy expensive. The only thing I would say, and, and their, their quality control has changed some in the sense that the only thing I'd say is when you assemble it, you're gonna wanna use a little bit of Loctite on the thumb screws that attach the handle to the upper part of the handle to the bottom part of the spreader. Outside of that, that's the only negative I might say, because if you don't do that, it might loosen up a bit, but you put a little Loctite on it, a little blue Loctite, you're good to go. Uh, but I will uh, show you that here in the live stream. So this guy is what I would would roll with. Let's see if Amazon loads, it did, yay, yay for that. All right, so uh, scroll down here, the Earthway, you got a bunch of different Earthway options, right? So a lot of people will go with the 2030P, that's a decent, op oh, I'm covering it up. This one here, that's a decent option, but what you really want for only 20 bucks more is the 2050. This is the, this is the one that I would go with. You got the air fill tires, you know, a big hopper. Uh, the, the biggest, uh, benefit to this guy, uh, Hit Matumbo, is that it's um, like a lot of the products you're going to use, so like your uh, your better your better fertilizers, along with like your insecticides and um, and um, fungicides, they're all going to have settings for the Earthway. So that's that's a huge bet. That, that alone is worth it because it's not you don't have to deal with the hassle of going out and finding like uh, conversion charts and that kind of thing. So the Earthway 2050 is what I would um, I would go with. It's one that I've used and I absolutely, absolutely love mine. I mean, I love it so much that mine started getting old and I gave my old one to Alex and I bought another one. I bought another one of the same thing. So that hopefully that helps. And you can find those on Amazon if you want a link to it. Uh, I will give that to you. Feel free to use it if you like. And if you don't want to, you don't have to either. But um, but that's a, it's an easy and free way for you to support the... Uh, the channel and uh, this, and yeah, there's tons of options. Go with the 2050. I would not, um, I would not cheap out and just save 20 bucks on the 2030. Like buy once, cry once. The spreader is going to last you a really long time. Uh, get, get the good one. Get the good one. Get that one, and you're not going to have any results with it. Any bad, any bad problems with it. Great, great question. We got Kelby Ruiz in the house. What's going on, Kelby? He says, hey, Ron, hope all is well, buddy. What's the biggest thing you've learned this season in the lawn with all your followers? Have a great weekend, bud. That's a, that's a good question. What's the biggest thing I've learned um, this season? What is the biggest thing I've learned this season? Hmm. What is the biggest thing I've learned? I don't, I don't know, man. Um, uh, that's a, that's a, that's a tough one. I mean, I, I guess I could say something that I've learned, a, some of the testing I've done is that watering your lawn every day um, in the middle of summer is not a good idea, even if you're doing it at a relatively low rate because it can create fungus problems. That is, that's something I've learned. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, that's, 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 that's probably the major lesson. I mean, I've learned a lot from you guys as far as just uh, the, the, the concerns and, and issues that you guys have. You look at my content this year compared to last year. Like last year, a lot of it was more vloggy. So like, it's more like, hey, this is what's going on in the lawn. This is what I'm doing with the lawn today. And the content now has been more, more user focused, more around like trying to help you guys solve problems in your lawn. Like the live stream has helped a lot with that. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's the biggest lesson is probably around, um, around just like, I say around watering, not doing too much of that. Cause a lot of things, I'm trying to think of what I've changed this year compared to previous seasons. I was spoon feeding last year, so I did that. Uh, 
Uh, that's yeah. I mean, I guess one thing also I've learned is the effectiveness of of um, of fungicides for suppressing or for stopping the spread of some pretty nasty lawn fungi. So like something like Pythium, where you normally have to go with like uh, Mephanoxum, something that's pretty a little more expensive, a little harder hitting. Uh, I've learned that you know using something like um, Heritage, something like Azoxystrobin, while it isn't isn't targeted to kill certain types of lawn fungus, but but it can stop it can stop it from 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 you know taking over an entire lawn. So those those are the kinds of things I've I've picked up. Yeah. So I've learned a lot from you guys. I've also learned just as a as a point of just absolute um, hilarity is that uh, there's pe there's like the like success just brings on um, people and like insects out of the corners that you just did not know exist. Like this, I mean, haters, when I had like 10, that one, like my little lowly 10,000 subscribers, we're all just hanging out, talking about Bermuda and top dressing. Life was all good, but the channel as it's grown has just been like the amount of people, the amount of hate and just drama in the lawn care community. That's become a thing, and I didn't expect that, you know, because it's 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 um it's something that I think that a lot of you guys do just for fun. You enjoy it. It's something that's just away from your work, and you just do it because you enjoy your lawn. You're probably most of you guys are probably a little bit competitive in nature. That's why you want your lawn to look the best in the neighborhood. But the if, if you could have told me that there'd be so much negativity um, from people just because of they just don't like you or success, or they're just because I'm willing to do something that they're not willing to do. Uh, I, I would have never expected it. So that's something else I've learned this year. And, uh, you know, I find it pretty funny and it's all par for the course. Such is life, right? Great question. That's a good one, man. That's a good one, Kelly. Thanks Thanks for giving me a chance to reflect over the course of this season so far. Appreciate you being around and uh, and being and supporting the channel. Okay, uh, so uh, BK Yamo, that's, that's a good point. That's a good, quite good point here. Because the downside to eliminating weeds now is heavy rain may cause excessive erosion. I ran into this issue during the spring this year after killing off a lot of my poannua. Yeah, so that's a good point. So if your lawn is one where, if you have like a slope, because I know there was a question earlier about prepping for next season. That's an excellent point, BK Yamo. I didn't actually, I didn't think about that. If you have like a, a heavily sloped lawn to where, you know, if you took if you took all the weeds away to where all you have now is just soil, you might have some more issues with erosion and washout. But if you have a, a relatively flat lawn, let's say it's like, like how my black lawn is, I would probably still try to eliminate the weeds because, you know, you're not going to have as much issues with erosion with a, a flatter, a flatter lawn uh, than you would with something that's got more of a slope to it. But that's an excellent point, like one I didn't consider. So thanks for uh, for bringing that in there. That's a good, that's a good, uh, a good point. Uh, Mauricio says, um, at Ron Henry, thanks for explaining on Blindside. Always take the opportunity to join the live stream, continue to learn. Thanks for what you do and sharing your knowledge. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. It's uh, it's a great uh, great having you as part of the as part of the uh, the community. All right, uh, Michael Chafin is in the house. He says, checking in for a few. Got to set up for a tournament uh, early in the morning. What kind of tournament? Oh, it looks like looks like a golf course. So I guess a uh, golf tournament that you're doing? Michael, I appreciate you coming to hang out, man. That's cool. That's pretty cool. Thanks for coming to, to step in for a little bit and say hey uh, hey to everybody. And um, JK has, uh, has, a th has a question. It says, um, thoughts on... Uh, Chlorothalonil. I've heard it has no resistance issues and will basically take care of all fungus. I'm not familiar with that particular active ingredient, uh, JK. Let me take a, a shot of that and do some research on it. I'm not sure about that guy. I'm not. I'm not. Um, I'm not. Um, uh, uh, I'm not, not. Not. Not familiar with that one to be able to speak on it. So it might work. But it, I don't, I'm not sure if it's also labeled for home lawn. So without knowing that, I can't, I can't recommend saying, yeah, go ahead and do it because it'll kill everything. Because there's, there's, there's a lot of fungicides. Fungicides are more than a lot of things. Fungicides, a lot of the really, um, like the hard-hitting fungicides, the ones that are super effective, aren't, a lot of them are not labeled for residential use. I don't, I don't know if that one is or not. Um, so I can't really comment on it. If it is labeled for residential use and it does all those things, then it might be a great option. But I just don't know about, enough about it to be able to, to, to give you an answer to that question. All right, but I'll, I'll take a note on that one because it's uh, it's it'll be an interesting research topic. And yeah, Clayton says, yes, I'm talking about liquid. So there you go, uh, Clayton. So I gave you an answer to both. So hopefully that helps answer your question. If I didn't, let me know and I can revisit. But I think I uh, I went through pretty much everything about that. All right. Um, Kellen says... Uh, question is, uh, first question says, hey, Ron, um, how is Miss, Mrs. Um, R. Henry? I don't know if you put a ring on it yet. Also, I don't think I mentioned I work in IT too. Props to you for holding down an IT job and mowing, et cetera, that much. You know, mowing is my therapy, man. Believe it or not, like this, like what I'm doing here with like the live stream and just hang out with you guys, this is therapy. It's fun. It's not, it's not karate. Although I enjoy martial arts. I love martial arts. It's a big part of my life. Um, 
you know, some aspects of it can be like work. Uh, and work, obviously, is like work. But mowing my grass, I get out there, I put my, my headphones on, put a podcast on, and just relax in the lawn. And it's just something I really enjoy um, doing. As far as how is Miss uh, Mrs. Uh, R. Henry? Doing well, I guess. Um, doing okay. Yeah, I guess I guess doing doing okay. Last time I checked, I'll have to... I'll have I'll have to I'll keep you I'll have to I'll have to ask her how she's doing I guess when she gets back she's at a uh, at a football game right now but I think she's doing okay last time I uh, last time I checked last time I checked but thanks for uh, for probing in there uh, Kellen all right next up we got J C Clean Cuts I'm guessing a lawn care business of some sort or maybe just someone that has a clean cut says when can I apply Prodiamine pre emergent um, yesterday. Uh, you sh I mean, if you have a warm season lawn, really you have cool season too, but if you have a warm season lawn, you want to get it down uh, now, JC. Uh, really, September um, was the month, it was the window opened for applying pre-emergent, but now you are getting more on the on the end where uh, you want to do it. So like this weekend, if you already have some, it would be the time to get that done. All right, uh, Juan uh, Henriquez is chiming in. He has a question. He says, is the flow zone worth investing in? I'm running the Chapin hand pump backpack sprayer. Uh, it's up to you, man. You can still get a great result with a, with a Chapin. If you get the hand pump and you're able to run it well, you can get a good result with that. I mean, I think the pros of like an electric powered sprayer like the, like the um, flow zone or the yard mastery is just ease, right? You're not doing this the entire time while you're walking around. Uh, I'd like to think that they're a lot more consistent as far as flow rate than the um, than the, uh, the the pump models. Um, yeah, that, those are the big things. That's the big reason. So you can you know you're not, it's just you're not having to you're not having to manually actuate it, and because they're more consistent as far as flow, you can get a more consistent result. So it's up to you whether or not you want it, they're worth getting. If you like what you're using and the, the Chapin's working well, just stick with it. If you're getting good results with it, there's no reason to change. But if you are in the market for one, like say you, you decide, hey, I'm gonna make the leap and go from like a hand pump sprayer to a battery powered sprayer. Like I like my Chapin 24 volt. That's not a bad sprayer too. As far as like a, on the on a lower tier, lower end sprayer, that's not a bad option. Um, Spraymate I think makes a pretty decent sprayer too on that lower tier, like the $150 price point for a sprayer. But now if you're going for the uh, like a premium price point, in my mind anyway, there's really only the Yard Mastery and the Flow Zone. And out of those two, the Yard Mastery is the better buy because it costs less, it flows more, and it also includes the T-Jet tips. Like literally you buy the, the Yard Mastery spray and you don't have to buy anything else. You're, you're good to go. So hopefully that helps. I mean, if you if you like what you're doing now, man, just stick with it. Like I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of just, if it's working and you're, you're liking the results, like why uh, why change things up? You know what I mean. Um, plus another another thing we to, another thing you have to consider too is your pump sprayer, your manual pump sprayer. It's always ready to go. Like you know your battery a battery sprayer. You got to make sure you keep the batteries fresh. You got to keep them charged up. So there is that. That's another thing you have to consider as well too. But I I personally think they're worth it. Like I would not um, do my lawn with a um, with a manual pump sprayer. I would use a battery power a battery pack powered one. And if you want, um, decide to go with the Yard Mastery one. I will put a link in the description um, here. This will take you to that. Um, mainly because it's a great way for you to support the channel and it's gonna make a bunch of people that don't like me irritated. So I gotta do it, man. I gotta, I gotta you know, you have to also feed the trolls a little bit too. Hopefully that helps uh, Juan. And if you need anything else, let me, uh, let me know. And Patrick is saying, I just bought the Yard Mastery Sprayer one. So there you go, Patrick. You and Juan chat in the comments back and forth and then you can let them know what your thoughts are with it because you know, anytime I recommend a product, people sometimes may, might think that, oh, you're just recommending it because, you know, you, you affiliate program or whatever. I mean, they seem to forget that I, rec that I recommend a ton of stuff that I, that I can't earn a penny on, and yet I still recommend it because I think it's the best. So, but I, I wholeheartedly recommend the Yard Mastery Sprayer. Great price, great product. You can actually get it, and it's, it's literally a buy once, cry once product. You buy it, and you're done. All right, uh, next up, Jesse Snow is in the house. And where he says, hey, I'm building a new house on acreage that used to be pasture land. New house on acreage used to be a pasture. Okay, uh, how would you go about keeping from keeping uh, keeping the common from creeping into my seeded area? Um, I guess you're talking about keeping weeds and that kind of thing out of your seeded area. Pre-emergent might help, but pre-emergent is not great for um, for a lot of grass types. So if, like, so if this pasture was like a grass type that um, like, you know, like pre-emergent just isn't going to kill, uh, then then I, I, I'm, I'm trying to think what I, what I could tell you as far as that goes. I mean, like, let's say that you're putting in, let's say you're putting in Bermuda, right? 
and the pasture area was like a taller grass type, like some some tall like pasture grass. I don't know what that would be, but some tall pasture grass. Something you can do in addition to using pre-emergent and, and post-emergent herbicides to keep weeds out of that area is if you can mow Bermuda at the height that it, it likes to be mowed at, that it does, it thrives at, which is lower, it's really like an inch and a half or lower, Jesse, that's gonna do well for um, allowing the Bermuda to do well, but not allowing a lot of the grass types, whatever things that you that you may have in the, uh, that, that, that were native to that area from doing as well, because not very many grass types can tolerate being cut super short. Like, like rye can, uh, um, KBG can, Bermuda obviously can, Rhizoysia can. There are some uh, like weeds, like, like spurs that can too, but like mowing a, the grass shorter or at the correct height is something that's gonna really, that, that, can, that can give you an advantage. Without knowing like what kind of grass is native to the area, it's, imp it's a really hard question to answer. But the best thing I could say is, you know, get the area seeded or, or sodded, whatever you're trying to do to get it to transform once you get your house in there. Get your pre-emergent down, you know, use a post-emergent herbicide to kill off any weeds that you don't want, and then just start keeping up with your mowing so you're really encouraging the grass that you want to be a thing to really do well to, to stay. And that's also gonna make it harder for the weeds to, to compete with the grass you wanna keep. So hopefully, hopefully that helps. All right, Kelby, I appreciate it, man. You gave me a super chat, thanks so much. Super chat received. I appreciate it. He says, if September was too late for pre-emergent, uh, what about Texas? We're still pushing mid 80s, low 90s. I'm still waiting for the ground temp to stop, drop to 70. Here's the thing, um, Kelby. So you're in the 80s. Oh yeah, if you're still 80s, low 90s, you could probably wait a little bit longer. But again, I am of the mindset that doing pre-emergent a bit earlier in the seat, a bit earlier is better than a bit late. Because if you do it late, it's still gonna work, but you're gonna have some weeds that are gonna be ahead of when you applied it, right? So I would I would err on the side of a little bit early than a little bit late. If you want to, um, Kelby, depending on how much time you have and if you're willing to do this, you could do split apps, right? You could do, like you could say you're doing prodiamine, um, you could do some of it now, and then you could do another application, you know, a couple of months from now, just to split up with the rate that you were gonna use um, for the fall and just do it over two different applications. That's completely an option too. So uh, hopefully that that helps. Um, but yeah, I would I would err on the side of a little bit earlier than a bit late when it comes to pre-emergent. All right, Clayton is chiming back in. He says, "Great overview, Ron. I'm on the carbon fertilizer program. I'm talking about beyond that. Looking for a single liquid purchase. Oh, a celebrant headway. Other may need to look at the earthway. Okay, good. So so you're talking about like insecticides, fungicides, that kind of thing. Okay, so you already got it, man. So for insecticides, I would go with the celebrant. It's a great great insecticide." Uh, if you want something to save a little bit of money and it's gonna give you an insecticide and a fungicide in one, you could do Caravan. Caravan G is a great option. The nice thing about a Celeprin is that with the two active ingredients that are in it, it's a better fungicide than, Car it, it works better as a fungicide than Caravan G. So what I might do is this. If you want to um, save a bit of money and also be a bit more efficient, what you could do is you could apply Caravan G as your first app of the season. So like do that in like April, right? Which is still, which is a bit early for fungicide, but you could still do that. Um, but it's not too early for, for insecticide. So you do Caravan G like say in April, and then when late May, early June rolls around, that's when you could go with something like Headway G as your preventative fungicide application as we go into summer months, summer temperatures. So that's what I would do. I would do a, I would do a, a Caravan G to start, and then um, a uh, and then headway later on in the season. Or if you if you don't want to do that, you could just do a celeprin like March April, and then do your fungicide um, just with headway in May June. So that's that's an option too. But if you wanted to kind of get like a little early start on your fungicide, you could do Caravan G. I'll put links for both of those in the chat, uh, Clayton. So there you go. There's the Caravan and there's the um, headway G. Either one are going to work great. Um, both, both really good, um, both good products, especially the insecticides. The insecticides are, uh, Celebrate is an amazing, amazing insecticide. Okay, E pops in next and says, hey, good evening, Ron, happy Friday. Would you use a pre-emergent prior to installing sod and is there a wait before laying sod? Um, would I apply pre-emergent before installing sod? Um, probably not, probably not. I mean, cause you want, because it's gonna, I mean, <laughs> Pre-emergent isn't, let me think, let me start, pre-emergent. <laughs> Sod is already grass, it's already germinated, it's already, for, to, to, on, on many levels, it's already established to an extent. But um, I would probably do the, put the sod in first, 
and then do pre-emergent afterwards. And really, really, it depends on your grass type. So if you, so if you did sod um, now, so you had Bermuda, right? And you're just, you're, you just didn't care. You want to get sod put in right now. I would do, let me see, we're in uh, October. With Bermuda only, I would, I would probably still do pre-emergent in the spring. If you're dealing with something like a uh, any kind of a cool season grass, then you got a year to wait. You would give it an entire year before you do any kind of pre-emergent just to be safe. Um, but I would, I would wait till afterwards because the I always do like a like a, 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 a like you think of like a like a benefit a benefit risk ratio here, right? Like, could you put down pre-emergent before and then put your sod down, and it, would everything work out pro, um, work out just fine? With assuming it's like Bermuda, probably it probably would be just fine. But when you given the co given the cost of sod and like all the work that goes into to installing it, I would rather err on the side of caution, even if it means dealing with like a few months of more weeds than you normally would have to ensure that the sod that you're putting in does well. I mean, Bermuda is probably would probably be fine either way, but just to be safe, I would um I would wait. I would wait out just to be out of an abundance of caution. I would wait. All right, next up, um, BK Yamo is checking out. He says, enjoy your live stream. And yes, I have a sloped lawn, which is why I experienced the erosion. Excellent catch there on your part. Have a great weekend. Thanks so much, BK Yama. Thanks, have a great weekend. Get out and do something safe and fun in the lawn. And then D. Mayer is saying, um, hadn't signed off yet, um, but JK uh, Chloran, there we say, uh, chlorothalonil isn't labeled for homeowner or residential use, EPA changed the labor restrictions in the early 2000s. Thanks for that, Demir. I really do appreciate it. Um, so yeah, that, that's the thing. Whenever I, um, you know, whenever I, I hear about some like the greatest things that sliced bread um, when it comes to fungicides, uh, that it you know cures all. The first thing I'm thinking of, if I haven't heard about it on, you know, because I mainly what I mainly focus on is res is residential turf. Is I haven't heard about it. I mean, it could be something new on the offering, or more than likely, it's something that you're not supposed to be using on residential lawns. And thanks for uh, that, uh, Demir. Uh, I, I, I was kind of leaning towards that's what it would be, but, um, thank you for confirming that. So I appreciate it. Thanks so much. So for whoever asked the question, uh, don't spray that on your residential lawn. All right. Uh, next up we got, um, where is the dollar is saying, Hey Ron, uh, surge herbicide spot sprayed a week ago. I want to broadcast blanket spray some POA with etho um, muffisate, should I wait 30 days or not? I would read the label. I'm not, I'm not familiar with that particular product. Um, where is the dollar? So I would read the label and follow what it says. I'm not, I'm not sure on that one. Can't answer that one for you. My apologies. Well, guys, I think that is it. You know, look at that. We're getting, we're getting got done before 10 o'clock tonight. So we're, uh, you know, I guess people had weddings. People are getting ready for golf tournaments tomorrow. And you guys took um, pity on me, knowing that I have to wake up early tomorrow morning, letting me get a little bit more sleep. So I really do appreciate that. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Again, Essential G is back in stock. I'm doing the, the pay the bills part. Essential G is back in stock. If you're looking for pre-emergent in a small amount, Syngenta has now made Primo Max available. So be sure to go pick that up if you need it. Golf Course the Lawn Academy is live. And the Golf Course Lawn Store is still obviously live with all your lawn accoutrement that you need to create an amazing lawn. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. I really